want everyone to think what they used to be. You used to be a weak, shitty baby. You didn't know anything. You hadn't played any fucking video games. Your parents had to change your stupid diaper. You were nothing. You were goddamn nothing. And now, I want everyone to think what they're going to be in a hundred years. You know what you're going to be, my friend? A fucking skeleton. Caked in dust, falling apart in some shitty coffin somewhere. You are born to die. But the things that make it meaningful are those flashes, those battles in between. And there is no more important battle in your lifetime than the Let's Fight a Boss Game of the Year award. Maybe, maybe you're saying, no, John, that's not true. Like, Let's Fight a Boss, you know, they are not the biggest podcast. They are not the smartest podcast. Sometimes, occasionally, they're not even the most attractive podcast. Sometimes. And I'll say, fair enough, but you know what we are? We are the world's strongest video game podcast and for the next i'm gonna say four hours we are here to inject meaning into all our pathetic little lives we have 70 video games the biggest let's fight a boss game of the year ever and we are going to go through every single one of them to my left master of the cosmos the Traveler Among the Stars, it's Brian. Is it more reasonable to say three hours long? You can say that. Okay. <laughs> Let's just see. To my right, King of the Underworld, the Stuff of Nightmares, it's Neve. Hello. And with you always, I'm your host, the Nameless King, John. <laughs> so is Neva King as well? Yeah, we're both. Yeah, we're okay, all right. You know, so yeah, okay, go on. Sorry. Uh, right off the bat here, I know that some of you don't listen to the pre-show. I know that you all get excited. And I, 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 I do see the numbers. Yeah, I and see the yeah. numbers are there's, higher. There's on a the... good four or five thousand of you that just don't bother with the pre-show, and I am warning you right now: if you do not listen, if you don't stop this right now and go listen to the pre-show. You will regret it. I'm not explaining why. I'm not explaining how. I don't need to explain to everyone who's already listened to the pre-show because they know. They know why they need to listen to it. You, if you want to continue forward, hey, that's your choice, buddy. Way to ruin the most important event of the year. It's true. Yep. Neve, you got to say people who like to skip the pre-show? Um, don't do it. This will actually hurt you. Yep, it will. Yeah, it will physically. And you will leave a comment somewhere and you'll look like a fucking fool. Yeah, and I swear to God, there's some kind of, if I see some fucking comments, I'm coming for you. Yeah. I'm coming, and I don't mean uh, like online. You I were mean, warned uh, about the warning yeah, in the other warning. There is going to be no more warnings after this. Because they were in the pre-show. And like, let me tell you, there's some great comedy there's some that's going to pay off later. There's some skits. There's some skits. This, you're not going to understand them. You're going to be like, what the fuck does that mean? But there's also warnings, important warnings that I'm not repeating here. And private jokes. And very private jokes, yeah. But other than that, you know, just sit back and have a good time with, uh, with yeah. This is Game of the Year. Yes. We use the old school giant bomb method of Game of the Year, which they have abandoned because it is, is too frightening. It's too violent. We have 70 games here. Yeah, and they're from approximately the 29th of November 2020 mm -hmm. to the... 19th of December 2021. <laughs> Cyberpunk is in consideration for the best game. Let's, let's fight a boss's best game of 2021. Yeah. In a moment, I am going to hand Neve the sacrificial dagger and she is going to make the first cut. She will then hand the dagger to me. I will cut. I will hand the dagger to Brian. That's the order we're going in, Brian? Yeah, that's okay. the order. And we will keep going until we have one almighty game remaining. It will be brutal. We are going to get tired. We are going to fight. We will still be Let's Fight a Boss at the end of it. But just so you know, there is a time of year we plan for battle and it is this year. Deals have already been made. But if you listen to the pre-show, I don't need to tell you that. If you fucking... If you're still fucking... If we have 70 games. Do you guys want to read some out? I think I think it's time. I think it's time we read the yeah. full list. Okay, Neve, I'm going to start you off. I'm going to start it. Here they are. 
in alphabetical order. Al- yeah. Wow, Brian. Good job. I, I you worked really hard on this. Did you did you alphabetize it by hand? Uh, I used a thing on the side, but yeah, yeah. no, yeah. No, Brian, no, you didn't. You didn't. <laughs> no, he you... did, John. <laughs> you heard him. He did. I did. I did it all myself. <laughs> okay, here we go. 12 minutes. A. Adios. Alba, a wildlife adventure. Aliens Fire Team Elite. Biomutant. Boomerang X. Bravely Default 2. Chicory. Cyberpunk 2077. Death's Door. Deathloop. Disco Elysium, the final cut. Dejoran. Dojeran? Sorry. Dojeran? Sure. Dungeon Encounters. Eastward. Inders Lily's Quietus of the Nights. Evil Tonight. Fantasian. Fights in Tight Spaces. Fuga Melodies of Steel. Guilty Gear Strive. Halo Infinite. John, you're the next chunk. Uh, Haven. Heart Chain Kitty. Inscription. It Takes Two. Kaze and the Wild Masks? What the fuck? Yep. Kid A Manisha Exhibition? Little Nightmares 2? Loop Hero? Lost Judgment? Maquette? Mario Party Superstars? Metroid, De- Met- Bleh, Metroid Dread? Monster Hunter Rise? Mundan? No More Heroes 3? Omori? Outriders? Pac-Man 99? Persona 5 Strikers? Seriously? Mm-hmm. Um... Pikmin Bloom, Pon Poo, Psychonauts 2, Ratchet and Clank, A Rift Apart. Take it away, Brian. And then the last chunk are Resident Evil Village, Returnal, Sable, Scarlet Hollow, Shin Megami Tensei 3, Nocturne HD, Remaster, <laughs> Shin Megami Tensei 5, Sky, Children of the Light, Solar Ash, Tales of Arise, and now we're getting into the the titles, <laughs> the ascent, the dark pictures anthology, House of Ashes, the Forgotten City, the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles, the House in Fata Morgana, the Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD Remaster, the Matrix Awakens an Unreal Engine Five Experience, <laughs> the Procession to Calvary, Tori 3D and Tori Two, which are being counted as one game. Yeah. Tormented Souls, Toho Luna Nights, Unpacking, Virtua Fighter 5 Ultimate Showdown, Voice of Cards, The Isle Dragon Roars, and the final game is Wildermyth. That's 70 games. 70 games. Oh my god. Neve, friend, do it. So it's my turn to take the first cut i tried to do this last year but like john blocked me super hard on genshin impact so this year i'm gonna do it and you can't fuck me up with this my first cut is 12 minutes you know i think there's an um, argument to be made about like the ambition of a game and like that they try to do something interesting I'm not going to argue for the incest game. So <laughs> you do what you got to do, Neve. Uh, I think this game had like real problems. I think it was a chore to play. And mm-hmm. um, I think there is like, this game was so ill received. I think there is like a mild biggest shit show contender in there because it was really for a long time. This was the cinematic Annapurna game that was going to do some crazy shit. But yeah. There was hype for this game when people oh, yeah. first saw it. The like top-down look of it looked super cool. It's a point-and-click adventure, has an Annapurna behind it, and it has voice um, acting by two big, two big actors. And it was just so unbelievably unpolished and awful. It's the one. To, it's that type of like video game that is trying to ape tv and film so fucking hard that it brings in all these stupid annoying tropes in its kind of mission to be kind of cinematic or shocking or do like shocking the shocking stuff bothered me a lot because i felt like a lot of the shocking shit was like violently murder your wife over and over and i think that shit flew like seven years ago when this game got started i don't think it flies now no and they also give her like a gigantic ass (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> you know what I mean, Neve? Like, don't don't they? Didn't they just give her the most honk? And, I, and like, I'm not <laughs> like a, a big dumb so like, I was unaffected. But it like, was, a, like, like a real big weird. Pixar oh, ass. Uh, yeah, but yeah, you know yeah. what? The, the where where you see it the most is like when you're hiding in the closet while a man comes into the house and murders her on the floor, <laughs> and yeah, like, you just stay so Brian, there. You're as looking her... you're looking out through the slits, and you can tell they just framed it just just right. And, and so the ass is mounted, ready for the murder. Is that what the game is trying to go for? <laughs> it was uh, just... the game is going for a look at the shocking content but oh hey look at this ass oh, yeah <laughs> it was like it literally turned kind of violent misogyny into a game mechanic and kind of disregarded uh, an entire character in a character in a kind of story that should involve maybe two people mm. and uh yeah the twist was incest and it was terrible just a, a terrible game everyone hated it <laughs> and it, i really felt like i wasted my time bad game bad game yeah Okay, so Neve, you, you took what I'm going to call one of my games, so I'm going to take one of your games. How and was 12 minutes one of your games? I, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a 12 minutes, what do they call it, my stan. Um, so <laughs> no, you're not! I, I, am to- I, I am totally, which makes okay, this okay. next move completely logical. Oh, Brian, what are you going to ask me? No, I was going to ask, like, who is the person that defends 12 minutes, and <laughs> how far do I need to go to get away from that? <laughs> um, Halo Infinite. <laughs> I'm just fucking around. I'm not, no, no. Uh, I just love the idea that, like, well, Neve, you took 12 minutes away from me. <laughs> um, this is actually very difficult because I'm not sure I know of a game that I think deserves to go this early. John, there were some games you did not like this year okay, yeah. that you played, yet you were like, fuck that game. Um, hmm. Like I'm going through, I think, like John. Okay, John, you played approximately 35 games this year. Uh-huh. On your list, is there a game that you were like, nope, not for John. I don't like it. You see, I can think of stuff, but I'm also like, uh, is this stuff that like, like I can think of a lot of stuff I just didn't like. There's very little that I thought was just shit, you know. Because oh. I've three shitty games. I can give you one of my shitty games. Give me, give me one, give me one. Well, I don't know if you played any of them though. That's the thing. You see, I don't want to cut something I haven't played. Um, Unless you want to make a deal that I go okay, now. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, fuck. I got one. And I, I don't think this is going to fly, but I did not like Persona 5 Strikers. John. No. It's okay. I played a bit of Strikers, and I got to say, it had the Persona 5 problem. Oh, yeah, it does. It took Persona. three hours to fucking start, Brian. <laughs> yeah, it's Persona 5. Uh... Hmm... I can give one of my games, but we gotta make a deal. I, no, I gotta... Wait, hang on, what kind of deal is that? Why do I have to make a deal with you to go one of your games? Because you haven't played any of my games that I don't like. So I'd be doing you a favor? No, not necessarily. Okay. Because it means that one of your games that you're Sean. kind of lukewarm on gets to cut, be cut. This is like game 69. I know, you I need know. To like, <laughs> but like, okay, speed no, it I, up. I, I, will, like, but like, but I like, will speed it up. It's just, I don't know that there's, I don't know I played anything that awful. I thought most 69 is such a good number though. Yeah. Make it, uh, make it Cyberpunk 2077. I didn't play Cyberpunk. Well, it doesn't matter. Uh, eventually we'll get to a stage where we will not have played some of the games we were going to try and cut. Just say Mario Party Superstars. Nope. John, just saying, I can give you one of my bad games, but just, yeah. I, I got three shit ones here to offer up to you, but we gotta... Just cut Cyberpunk, what's wrong with you? Um... <laughs> I'm loving this. This is so hard, why is this so hard? Like, I used think to be you better forgot how to play this game, John, just cut something. Uh, uh, Brian, can I not just cut Persona 5 Strike, because I didn't like that. <laughs> no, I like that game. Oh, um... Mm. What do you got, Brian? What do you got? <laughs> I'm sorry, Neve, I'm sorry. I don't okay. know. <laughs> I can offer you a bad game, and I will talk about it because you have nothing to say about it. Uh-huh. You saw me play it for a brief moment, and you did not like it. But really, this is my game to drag. Okay. But know that I am giving you this upon you because you are not using this effectively. And it's just I don't think I have any game that I think is worthy to go okay. this early. Well, cut just one of our shitty games. I tried to cut two, Neve. <laughs> well, just know I'm doing you a solid, John. You're okay? not doing me a solid. I don't accept that at all. Well, okay. Well, then, John, pick a game that you played. Okay, Biomutant. You haven't played it. I put hands on Biomutant. I did. You gave me the controller for how long? 
in like 30 seconds and it was Jesus all I needed. Jesus Christ, John. That doesn't count. Biomutant is a terrible game and I will offer you Biomutant. No, no, it's not an offer. It's just <laughs> Dungeon Encounters. Uh, no. <laughs> Neve, that game was 30 euro and it was shit. <laughs> Shit, not shit, but... <gasps> John, do you like Death's Door? Because you haven't said anything good about it. Death's Door is not terrible. Would you defend it? Yeah, I, a little bit. Because people love that game, go. and it's kind of funny that you don't like it. Because everyone yeah. loves that little fucker. You could argue that the Kid A exhibition is that. It's an exhibition. Like That's that. better than other uh, uh, exhibition okay. games I've played this year. <laughs> Fuck it, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. Mm, no. <laughs> John, do you want to buy a mutant? Just saying, I'll be doing you a solid. You're not doing me a solid. I refuse to accept that. Fuck it. No more Heroes 3. I don't know. Okay. No. No. John, just cut Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk. Okay, great. Cyberpunk is the 69th best game we've played this year. That's such a... Okay, Cyberpunk 0069. Neve, I, I, mean, I feel like there's some... Like, there's shit you liked about Cyberpunk. Yeah, but I'm not gonna, like... Like... Okay. I like that I gotta play a cute little butch who like <laughs> spent her time twirling her hair around like Pan Am. Like, I'm not gonna argue that. You can cut Cyberpunk. I cut Cyberpunk. Do you want to sell this game out? Send this game out? Do you want? Do you want to like? Neve, give it a eulogy. <laughs> well, that was bad, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, uh, driving my car down the highway, I kept go waiting for the game to just burst apart at the seams. It was held together with tape and promises, and it wasn't very good at all. Bye, Cyberpunk. Goodbye. Okay, at number 68, I am cutting Biomutant. And I've written some things about Biomutant, my least favorite game of 2021. <laughs> I've written here, and I wrote this a couple hours ago when I was getting, when I was full on heated gamer, which I wrote, I despise this game, which I don't know if I would, I, I guess I wrote that when I was angry. I'm less angry now. I don't like this game. You don't know if you despise it though. I don't know if I despise it, but I do not like this game. So here are some things. It is an open world map game where you climb towers to unlock side missions. These kind of games need to do better. This does not do anything to improve that genre. Uh, it has a fun character creation, but really it doesn't mean anything beyond cosmetics after a few hours of gameplay, despite the implication being that it would be. It's all a misleading illusion. It looks bad. Lots of popping and low-res textures. Every village is the same. You can enter an area you've never been to before, and the shop alleys are exactly where they always are. It's a copy and paste world. It sounds bad. English voice acting is weak. Voiceover narration is obnoxious. I had it turned off immediately and switched it to Korean because I like the voice actors. Gameplay is fine, but it feels like you're just chipping away at enemies. Even when you play aggressively and line up some skilled moves, it doesn't have any sense of style or weight. It's incredibly dull. How is the comic book filter? Terrible. <laughs> <laughs> the role-playing options are implied to be diverse and multi-purpose, but the game funnels you into relying on the same playstyle as almost everyone. Trying something different is ineffective. The abundance of forced tutorials at the start do not help this. And then, why did I buy this? <laughs> it was developed by a Swedish studio called Experiment 101. They're a small European team, and I wanted to check them out. I'm always curious about games made in the other continents. That means Europe, South America, and Australasia. Because I guess the majority of games we play are from North America or Asia. Mm -hmm. I didn't think this game would be that bad. I figured I'd find some small details I'd like. I did not. There you go. I do not like Biomutant. Bye, Biomutant. Bye, Biomutant. <laughs> Neve. Okay. I can offer you a game I can offer you. No, I don't need you to offer me anything. Um, Kaze and the Wild Masks. What is that? It is a Donkey Kong clone that um, I thought I would get into, but I didn't. How did you get it, Neve? I didn't play it. I just remember Brian not liking it. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'll cut that game. Hell yeah. I have nothing to say about it, honestly. Um, <laughs> If you're curious about what Kaze and the Wild Masks is, 
type it into YouTube and look at it. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Brian. Way to paint a fucking picture. <laughs> I can't. I'm just so unenthusiastic about this game. I will say the, the, the pixel art was nice. Like, there was nice pixel art in it. Like, like it wasn't anything to... Ho- like. I actually think, like, the standard of games this year is high enough that yeah. even the shit we're cutting now, it ha- all has redeeming qualities. I know, yeah. It's very hard to say something looks bad in 2021. Yeah. Like, things yeah. look very good. Just this game, I'm not enthusiastic enthusiastic about in any capacity and i'm sure their people are and maybe listen to them about this game instead because i i couldn't tell you anything positive about it (laughs) i played it for a couple of hours and felt nothing and i was disappointed okay Uh, video games are silly i am going to cut the ascent yeah fair enough i think the ascent might actually be a good game i thought the console port of it was terrible uh just so buggy so fucked up all over the place like even the basic work to make it work on a console i feel wasn't there just tiny text on like a predominantly text-based game this i I, it just everything about it repelled me and like i'm not saying i think that you know the ascent is terrible i'm saying that the job they did porting it to consoles was extremely poor and that's why it's gone yeah the scent looks pretty straight off like the bat and has beautiful texture work um i dropped it because it was so buggy i spent hours walking around being like no one's attacking me where am i going and then i had restarted the game and found myself stuck in the middle of a level 20 area that i just had continued to walk down because nothing triggered Mm -hmm. uh super buggy game which was disappointing and also a lot of very slow back and forth walking to places. I, can't, I found it quite dull. So that's the ascent at number 66. At number 65, we have Sky Children of the Light. This is my second least favorite game of the year. And I got some things to say. Because the way I do it is I write things about my six favorite games and I write things about my three least favorite games. You're very passionate about your least favorite games. Like, you're always the one who I feel comes into this, like, knives out, ready to just cut shit. Like... And maybe that's what I should have done. <laughs> it sucks that like I uh, that I, I don't like these games, and it's unfortunate because I do want to like them. But it is interesting to like tell myself why I didn't like them. Mm. Yep. And I think that's important to inform yourself of, I guess, when you play enough video games or whatever media you do. I can't believe this studio that made Journey made this game. What happened? Oh, I remember this. Yeah. This game is a Journey clone. You're a cloaked character venturing towards a large monolith on the horizon. The only difference is that you can fly now. The flying controls are bad. <laughs> it feels like a bootleg. Uh, it feels like a bootleg game made by a studio pretending to make a journey clone, but it's directed by the same director, Genova Chan. A lot of development staff left that game company to form Giant Squid. You can tell that this left the former creatively uninspired it's just sad and then i played this game on the switch it was not optimized for the system it uses a mobile app ui when paused like it it, like the game's an android game Mm -hmm. uh it's incredibly buggy and i had a software crash and then i wrote at the bottom a genuinely disappointing experience i'm very upset (laughs) i'm very upset the game was free so how upset can i be and is that number 65 in our yes. cut? Wow. Getting through them. Slowly but surely. Is that my go again? Yep. Your go again. It's number Fuck. 64, which is one of my favorite numbers. Um, <laughs> oh, shit. I'm going to be a little bit cheeky. I like how 8 eights make 64. Yeah. yeah. I love the number 8 as well. And my cheeky cut is maquette. I wanted to talk shit about Maquette. You, you can, can talk you shit can about shit. it. I'm just cutting it. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Maquette at number 64. Do you have anything to say about this game, Neve? Um, I heard you talk about it once and I deleted it off the console. <laughs> yeah, this this was a PS Plus game for yeah. PS5 in February or March. It was earlier on this year. And I played it. And while it is a competent game... It's incredibly uninspiring in terms of visual, audio, and play. It's a cliche first-person walking sim with a narrative voiceover. These games have existed for over a decade now, and this one is doing nothing new. 
The main negative is that the game presents itself as if it's a fresh take. The game feels like a satire of its contemporaries, but it's not. It's fucking cringe. The puzzles are not good. They've done they've been done better in older games like Superliminal and The Witness. Mm. The game offers nothing new. Despite being quite competent, like it's very playable, but why would you? I would watch a YouTube channel of Brian just purely discussing games he did not enjoy. <laughs> There's just a kind of rhythm to the way he talks about it that I find kind of very soothing. The way I do it is I talk like how my mother talks to me when I fuck up. <laughs> okay. So yeah. Okay. It's a, it's a, it's a very specific kind of energy. Okay. Uh, this next one for me, I kind of, it sucks because I actually recommended this game in a video. I then played more of it, but this is Haven from December, 2020. And um, if you're unfamiliar, this is two lovers are lost in space and they land on this planet and they have to soak up all this energy. And what I really liked about this game is the writing wasn't always fantastic, but it genuinely hit on like moments where it's like, oh yeah, that is what it's like to be in a relationship, like in a very genuine way. And you don't get that a lot in games. You do not get like really well established dynamics between two characters. My problem with it is the the gameplay that padded out those moments. Um, it's like you're playing it and for the amount of gameplay that's in it, you're like, I'm guessing this is like a kind of five hour game. And then you hit six hours and it's getting long. Like it's getting really long. And then you check time to beat and it's 22 hours. <gasps> no. And I, <laughs> it's one, like, I, I don't often re like regret recommending stuff in videos. I do unfortunately kind of record, like, I do kind of regret this. Uh, it was from the Game Bakers who are, who made Fury, which was one of my favorite games of, I think, 2016, I want to say, Ryan. I think 15? it was 2016. Yeah. And unfortunately, like, all the respect in the world to them, to them for, like, taking such a big risk and doing such a different kind of game. But it's also hard not to look at this and just feel like it's a massive letdown from Fury for me personally. I don't think this is a bad game at all. I think if people want to see, like, a genuinely good relationship done in the game, do check this out. Like, if you can get it on sale or whatever, you should. But this is one I really soured on after kind of initially recommending it. And I think it's got to go out kind of early here. So that's Haven mm -hmm. at number 63. Okay, me. I am going to say Heart Chain Kitty. The little game that could. The little game that could. Okay, so I was intrigued by Heart Chain Kitty because of the outsider art aspect of it. It was made by someone who didn't okay. really understand video games, but kind of tried to make a video game emulating uh 3d platformers and it's a fun experience in that way that you're playing a game masquerading as a game but it's not a game but it is it's incredibly buggy but that's part of the charm but the thing is i played another unusual game this year that does it so much better which will probably get discussed later on as we go through the list so Heart Chain Kitty was an interesting experiment and I have checked the developer on the Switch eShop and they have two other games under their label and those two other games look more interesting than Heart Chain Kitty. So this probably isn't the last time I will discuss them. How much was Heart Chain Kitty? It's like six euro. Okay. So it's fine. Uh, so that's Heart Chain Kitty at number 62. Hmm. What you got, Neve? I feel great. I feel like I can go for any one of these. <laughs> there's there's what I'm going to call a fat middle in yeah. here. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. now that we're out of, like, the worst games of the year, there's a lot of stuff I feel pretty comfy cutting. Hmm. I can offer you a suggestion. No, give me a second. Give me a second. Um, Pac-Man 99. Oh no! I I actually prefer like that. that. I prefer that game to other games on this okay. list. Okay, what about Omori? No, that that game's like it has problems. It does it does deserve to go further. Evil tonight. Evil tonight. Okay, evil tonight. I think every one of us has that game, or at least to 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 a certain extent. It's a game that you play, you don't play enough, and because of that, you can't really defend it. Yeah. Despite enjoying what you played so far so far evil tonight is a game that i played a week ago okay and i played it for a couple of hours and i liked what i played 
but not enough to kind of like get my head around it. I mean, there's a lot of games that are going to be on this list that I feel yeah. like we're going to cut where it's like, I have a feeling this is going to pick up, but I can't push it any further than this. But I mean, you know, as we always say when we do this, games are not our full-time job. We all have commitments outside this. There is only so much we can play and we have to just go off what we played. Okay, Evil Tonight has Resident Evil and Sailor Moon vibes. Damn, that sounds what? great. I know. Uh, it's a survival horror game, top-down, SNES-era graphics, but kind of with a HD polish and some kind of smoke textures in a like layered in on top um you are playing as a girl with a gun exploring a mansion and it uses oh brian this looks cool it's really cool you sure you, you sure you want to cut it now and look we don't know enough about it <laughs> i but know i did like see that she has a denim vest and a gun and that speaks to me <laughs> i know it's really it's like so far i'm enjoying it but i haven't played enough that mm-hmm. i'd be like i i don't know what to think because i might check this out this, this art is fucking dope yeah it's made by two brothers uh they're from spain i think it's a very small team um but i i really really like this game it's just I couldn't tell you enough about your it. Your reason's valid. Like if if you if you if you don't have enough to go to go to bat for it. Yeah, like this game is number sixty one on our list. Could have been number forty one on our list, but it's just one of those games where it's just going to bounce around in the middle. Unfortunately, it just happens to be on the ladder or the the, the you know the, the other half of that middle. I was just calling out names that weren't mine and see what landed. So yeah, that's sorry, Evil Tonight. Yeah, uh, e- Evil Tonight is cool. Um, if 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 whatever I'm saying sounds interesting, check it out. People should at least like just Google a couple of screenshots yeah. and artwork. I think it's on Switch and it's on Steam originally. Um, but yeah, it's it's it, it, it's a fun game that I'll probably play a bit more of over Christmas. Cool. Evil dies tonight. Number sixty, I believe. Yes. Death Store. Um, yeah, people are going to get mad at this. Um, yeah, this is on people's people like, love this top game. five <sighs> of the year. Like, I think there's a few things about that. The crows are very cute. Like, the crows are mm. really cute in it. But with this game, like, I, I played like five or six hours of it. And in that time, I just saw absolutely nothing that I have not seen before and done better. Um. I feel like there's a real move in kind of like game discussion in critical circles this year to be like, you shouldn't compare things to other things. Everything should be examined in isolation. I think I'm at the point where I'm ready to say, I think that's absolute fucking bullshit. I think that's such a weird way to talk about media at any point during experiencing any piece of media you could sit up and go experience a different piece of media so this isn't like a this isn't some weird like qualitative in isolation thing where we're trying to understand a piece of art for me it's is this the best way i could be spending my time and at no point during death's door did i experience anything that i feel like i couldn't have experienced better somewhere else there's good things about it the art style is cohesive it does look quite nice but it just felt like a lot of other genres, like there's a bit of Dark Souls, there's a bit of Zelda, there's a bit of Metroid. It just felt like a lot of those squeezed together and it was all done competently. No part of my problem with this game is the actual execution. I just don't think the idea was very exciting. Some of the art direction was interesting, some of it really wasn't. A lot of people love this game. You should not take my word for it. Like you should, like this is on a lot of people's game of the year. For me, I spent a lot, I spent like, like, three or four hours waiting to like it and then i spent two hours actively disliking it and i was just like no this is not doing it for me it's it's fine it's not a bad game but it's not i it's when i look back at like the games i really enjoyed this year this is not going to be one of them damn okay that store it's me mm-hmm. it's Brian okay now. now we're into the 50s this is going to be number 59 and we'll probably do a count back in a while not now. In a while. In a while. In a while. Okay. So in at number 59, I'm going to put Ponpu. Ponpu is a top-down action adventure in the gameplay style of Bomberman, in which you play as an alien duck who vomits up bombs. Cool. Uh, the visuals are cool, and it was fun to play, but I kind of lost interest when I wasn't playing it, and I forgot about it, unfortunately, which... It looks nice. It looks it, like it the, looks. It looks. It's it's great. And it's like I, the little duck from Minute. Yeah. But new. Yeah, and it, I I do love that it uses grayscale visuals, but it does a thing where like it's not black and white. It's cream and dark brown, which is like such a simple color palette choice, but 
immediately won me over but I found it a tiny bit buggy to play at times and you can kind of cheese it sometimes because it's grid based but it's also it also kind of feels like a flash game where you can kind of like kind of merge yourself further than you need to go in a level it doesn't feel as tight and refined as it should be unfortunately and I think that's kind of what made me lose interest was that the controls kind of didn't feel satisfying as much as the visuals did. But Pampu is a nice game if it's ever on sale and you're looking for a Bomberman-like game, I'd recommend Pampu. Cool bird. Neve. Man. Hmm. What's Tormented Souls? That's the Resident Evil game. Oh, that yes. I played. Yeah, okay. Never mind. How are we feeling about chicory? Yeah, how are we feeling about chicory? I I could I could swap out some games for chicory. Like chicory's not going to go much further. Yeah. But like the thing about chicory is it has like a goddamn near flawless art style, and it is an interesting idea. Like there's a lot of ambition and heart to that game. I just don't enjoy playing it. Yeah. What about chicory versus adios? Oh no, adios is fucking cool. Okay. What about Shin Megami Tensei 3? Because that, that's a game that didn't get enough time. You know, uh, on the same grounds as um, Evil Tonight, I could cut Shin Megami Tensei. I spent like two or three hours with it and I, I really enjoyed it. But also I think like, I think 5 is going to do quite well later in this list. And considering both those factors, I, I'd be okay cutting it. It seems cool. It seems really cool. I just don't have, I did not sink deep enough time into that game to really appreciate it. And it's also a remaster, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. As, as someone who played a remaster from beginning to end and got a lot out of it this year, I'm still willing to cut that pretty yeah. soon as well. But I, It's not like it's a brand new game or anything. Yeah, but it's just the fact that it's a game you liked but didn't put the time in. Yeah, and it's a good remaster as well. Yeah. Okay, John, now you get to pick a game. Okay. Oh, I think... If I'm really honest with myself here, this is going to be another one that I think people might get annoyed at. I think I got to cut Returnal. Yeah. I wish I got to play Returnal. Because I, think I think you if there would was... like Returnal, even. Yeah. I think you would push it. When I was playing Returnal, I felt like a dartboard. If you picture me as a dartboard, and then a banana just slams into it and falls off because it just didn't hit me at all. Okay. It was just... <laughs> yeah, like, it's a really good game, it, but I, it, I, it, it I, just I doesn't tick any of our boxes. I, I think Neve would actually like it. I think yeah, you Neve would. would enjoy the movement and the shooting of it, and I think she'd actually push it pretty far. And you probably would like the house set pieces and yeah. things like that. Yeah. But I did play Moon of Madness, which has all of that, but terrible combat. Um, And there's good things about it, but it was just like, I'm not a shooter guy. You know, I don't mm. enjoy pointing a red like landing a reticle on things and clicking like it just doesn't do anything for me and <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> that is the most reductive description of first person shooters Neil, do, you what, like, Neil, do you like do you like jumping you like onto platforms on <laughs> it's, it's what but uh, like that is the feeling i get from it i'm not saying yeah. that's all they are but that's just all they are to me and um this was just that for me it like i thought it was pretty okay like i thought it was pretty decent but there was never a point with it where i was like hyped there was never a point where i felt really like rewarded or and it was never doing it like the story was kind of interesting but it was kind of I another was, time loop one it's a time i oh my god yeah it, it is, is, it is, a, is time a time loop, loop yeah. one jesus there's probably a much better game in here that either I am not seeing or I am not the person to appreciate it. But since I'm the only one who really played it on the panel, Look, I think this I've is been waiting for a sale and best old game next year. You yeah. can tell me how wrong I am. Yeah, like this okay. game costs 80 euro. I know. This is why I haven't played it. Like, fuck yeah. that. We got a loan of it from Walt. I played it for a couple hours. John played it for more. Should we Should we give Walt a thanks? Thanks so much, Walt. And, you know, I, I didn't actually like Rezogun either. These guys last game, I didn't like how that game felt. Oh, I love Rezogun. And I think there's, like, there's some shared DNA. Oh, yeah, just absolutely. Head, like, there's a kind of kinetic-y, but kind of slidey feel to it. But anyway, yeah. I, I really don't think it's a bad game. I think it's probably pretty cool. I think it just did not land with me. Okay. It's my turn. Mm -hmm. Before I pick one of my games, I just want to ask, John, what's Wildermyth and do you, did you like it? Wildermyth is a procedurally procedurally generated adventure game 
and it does some interesting stuff, has some interesting ideas. I fucking hate its art style. Oh. Uh, <laughs> okay. Look at it, look up its art style. Ah, uh, John, that's not bad. I, I like that. I don't like its art style at all. I like that it's like like little cutout characters on a 3D board. The whole cell, the whole idea with this game is it's basically like a kind of Dungeons and Dragons campaign that procedurally happens and your characters kind of grow and change and stuff and kind of stories form through that. For me, it was like a character got a tattoo and then her skin turned blue and then she found an ice axe and that, that like just not a whole lot happened. And the combat was actually pretty good, but it didn't, um, it never really grabbed me in like a big way. So if you want to cut a brain, go for it. Okay, sure thing. I think this is also going to low-key make a lot of people's kind of... Best game. of the year, yeah. yeah. And so if, the, if that idea sounds exciting, you should give it a go and maybe you'll have a better time with it than I did. Okay, that's Wilder Myth at number 56. Mm-hmm. Which is... It's not bad. That is not bad. Yeah. Okay. Neve. Yes. <laughs> um, how are we feeling about Eastward, Brian? Um... <sighs> Oh, I don't. I that game looks so good, and it's not a good game, but it is. Yeah. It is one of the best looking games okay. that came out okay. this year. We can't cut it yet, but talk to me about it later. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The writing in that game is so frustrating. They won't shut up. How are we feeling about <laughs> the House of Fata Morgana? The House of Fata Morgana? No, no, I, I don't think it's 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 not the house's time yet. Okay. Okay. That game fucked me up. See, I've a cut that I can make that I feel will also make people very mad, so I don't really want to do it yet. Okay. Neil, you're very conflicted on Voice of Cards, but not yet. Is that correct? Yeah, Voice of Cards has more going for it to be let off in the 50s, okay. for sure. Okay, John, how much did you like Virtua Fighter 5? Because I didn't. Oh, we, we can let it go. Uh, okay, you're fucking wrong. <laughs> Virtua Fighter 5 is like one of the best fighting games ever. Do um, we play Guilty Gear Strive this year. Brian, Virtua Fighter fucking 5, but it's a re-release from many years ago, and they did not do a whole lot with the re-release. And they charged you for Brian, the low-poly models. We're gonna we're gonna play some Virtua Fighter. I'm gonna teach you how to play that fucking game. You're gonna play some Akira Yuki. Okay. Do we cut it now or do we I'm keep okay it? I'm okay with cutting it now. Okay, that's a 55. 555. Five, five. No, I don't want to make that bold. I'm writing stuff down in the document as we do it. Okay, what is number 54, John? I think I might be okay with cutting chicory. Yeah. Really, really wanted to like this game. And there's such cute moments to chicory. There's such fun characters. There's such clever use of stuff. But at the end of the day, I just don't think the mechan- the like paintbrush mechanics were very good. It-, it touched on a lot of great stuff. Like there was stuff about like being creative and like the pressure from other people and stuff. I think if it had gone more in depth at that, if it had nailed that stuff harder and like really gone for it, I think I, I would push this way further on the list. But for me, I beat Chicory and it was a game I was constantly struggling to like and finding things I appreciated, but never I was never in. You yeah, know like I mean? the, the game is energy, but only in small bursts. It's really hard to be continuously enthusiastic about it. Yeah, and like... At least that, that like like for me, that's what it felt like. I, I, I enjoyed it, but then I'd be really, really bored. And like, you know the way like Mario's noun is jump, Link's, like Zelda's noun is slash, Chicory's noun is paint, but it kind of just uses paint to do all the things you would normally do like there's very few instances where the paint is actually used and like you know you paint this spot and you can jump off that spot then shit like that yeah there's one part where like you have to paint a trail for enemies and you can like lead them around and that's interesting but that also becomes some of the most imprecise and like pull your hair out puzzles of the game uh the game's boss battles are a real high point though they're fucking insane and weird and strange and they're great and again this is another one that's going to people appear, appear on a lot of people's game of the year list. It's just not on mine. Um, I think people should look up screenshots, even like a trailer of this. And if you see stuff you like, go for it. Because like it is it is a special little game in its own way. And like I don't want to shit all over it because it does not deserve that. No. But it is our 54th. 54th best game this year. Okay. 53 Kid A Nija Exhibition. This is a first person walkabout exhibition game uh, but I enjoy this I love Kid A and Amnesia uh, Amnesiac I, I think they're both great albums this does a really good job of kind of like 
you could play this for a couple of hours or you could play it for at least 30 minutes but you go into a room and it'll play three select tracks and you walk around some really interesting visuals and it's not on the nose with the visuals like i went into one room and they did a pyramid song and Mm -hmm. what you would expect them to do with a song called pyramid song they did not do that with the visuals (gasps) Um, they put a sphere in there yeah don't they actually had a sphere (laughs) and they did another song i can't remember which track it was but they had these visuals of low poly demons but they did a zeotrope where they would flash around and they moved at a really low frame rate and i had a smile the entire time i experienced this and it is radiohead at its most radiohead like it does have a lot of like consumerism is bad because it's Radiohead. They're right. Yeah. Did you? Latest PS5 exclusive. Yeah. Uh, they're re- you know Tom York and the, the the boys do not like George Bush and he's not the president anymore anymore <laughs> anymore. In the new grappler backy backy kidnaps George Bush. Um, Just throwing that out there. It really feels like a time capsule from the early two thousands and it does that very well, but. There's only so much of that you can tolerate in 2021 and take seriously because it happened and it's been observed and we need to move on in some ways. Saying all of that, I really love giving an album a new lease of life for kind of like old fans and new fans of this kind of stuff. I'd love to see more versions of this. Like I would love a Nine Inch Nails one. I would love an Annie band, Annie, to get this kind of thing. I think it's a cool mix of like game development and 3D art with music and it's a a cool thing to do that I hope the PlayStation 5 and like Sony like utilize this and do more with this kind of stuff yeah and like it's a really good exhibition it curates you around in a really organic way you don't Mm. feel like you're walking down into a like door that belongs to the janitor that you're not supposed to be going like like they, they do a good job of making a virtual space and it does the impossible space thing as well where you walk through a door and the the shed that it's in is actually huge you're just in this big guggenheim looking building um it's got a lot of that stuff and it feels like the radiohead album art from the early 2000s visualized cool cool not even a video game that was number yeah it's not even a video game (laughs) except you do need to move around and advance it and at one point i think you have a jump i can't think um and the game is mostly in first person except for one bit where it looks like near automata for a second (laughs) Uh, so that was number 53. At number 52, Neve, it's your pick. <laughs> what was Fantasian? Oh, that was the Final Fantasy game. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, the Square Enix like. Not yet, but Dojeron. Dojeron, okay. Dojeron is a very good precision platformer starring a frog. If you, I think I said before, I think if you You showed me this game, Brian, and it was cool. Yeah, uh, it's in black and white and it is the bare minimum of information, but it's all you need to play. If you liked Celeste and you need something to kind of, I don't know, like fill that urge. Precision flat platform formers kind of stuff. Yeah, Dojeron is definitely that because, and like it really sets itself up because it has a speed running mode from the beginning. Like this game is designed for hardcore platformer enthusiasts. And you get to play as a frog, and he looks fucking brilliant. Frogs are very good. Cool. So that's number 52, Dojeron. Has a frog in it. Number 51, Fuga, Memories of Cold Steel. And this is a JRPG from the developers of Azora's Wrath. And it's the one where you run a giant, you live in a giant tank, and you're a bunch of small dog children. And occasionally you have to shove one of the little dog children into the cannon and kill them to survive a battle. Cool. Um, I played a couple hours of this, quite enjoyed what I played of it, but it was just that same thing as well where something else moved me on pretty quick and whatever hold this game had on me was not strong enough to me to keep playing. Beautiful artwork. Really, really nice stuff. Like, if you're into anthro art, you'll, you'll get a lot out of this. Um, but it, it's genuinely really cute. Uh, some of the writing and voice acting was a little too anime-y for my tastes. But um, it has a strong idea and it has a really unique kind of combat system where your entire party is in this one um, big tank and they're all piloting different guns. And you have to like 
then you're just fighting like regular tanks and like airships and stuff and it's cool um, I could totally see this as one of those games where like there might be more here than I'm seeing, but you know, with the with the couple hours I spent with it, like there was nothing. Everything about it was kind of like, oh yeah, that's cool, as opposed to like, whoa, this is really blowing me away. You know what I mean? And so I think fifty one yes. is as far as it goes. Okay, and then at number fifty, it's my pick is Pac Man ninety nine. Okay, this is a battle royale like, in the simplest of terms. Similar to Tetris 99, this is the Pac-Man treatment to it. And you play as Pac-Man, playing Pac-Man. And other people are also playing Pac-Man. And you send junk to each other in the form of more ghosts and pellets and buffs and debuffs. And it's a lot of fun. And I won a game. I got to number one in Pac-Man. And that was very satisfying. But at that point, I stopped playing the game. And it was a lot of fun when I played it. And I haven't really thought about it since, but I liked it. Cool. So, Nia, but number 49. Number 49, I'm going to get rid of Dungeon Encounters. I think that's the that's a good time for Yeah. It. Like, kind of how dare they charge that much for that. that. That's my whole thing with this <laughs> game. Like, I, I think about diving back in, but I'm like, how fucking dare you? Yeah, you can get full beautiful games for this. And this, like, is a concept that has been fleshed out or it was something else that has changed... But currently, in whatever state it is, it is a, a turn-based RPG uh, game. is set in a dungeon. There is no design to the dungeon. It is literally a grid on the floor. There, uh, It does small, interesting stuff in terms of its gameplay. Like, you cannot heal yourself of petrification. You cannot cure yourself. You cannot revive using uh, items. In fact, there is no item use. You need to go to different points on your map to do those abilities. It, it's trying stuff, and I appreciate that. As someone who's played a lot of turn-based stuff this year, I like I like new systems, and I like the age of JRPGs whenever you would pick up a JRPG, it would have a new system. And this is very its own thing. Totally. And that's what makes it interesting to me, and that is why I've spent a good few hours playing it. I got to a stage, though, and it just felt so... like It just fucking took the wind out of my sails completely, but I got to floor 18. And I was doing really well and I was really managing leveling two parties. But I got to floor 18 and the first battle I encountered was just a troll battle where every character was um, like 20 levels higher than all my guys. And I couldn't run from the battle, I couldn't flee from it. So I just had to die. And when your characters die, they are they're gone. Like they are stuck on that floor. And it just felt like a real... I didn't lose because I was bad at the combat. I didn't lose because I hadn't prepared. It was just a random troll battle that they threw in there to just knock your party out if you hadn't leveled up another party to replace them. And it, it kind of sucked. I hated it. I was just like, that that's crap. And you cannot save scum this. There is no hard save. It saves every time um, you finish a battle. So there's just no way for me to get my party back. I just have to... That's Do it the long way. Yeah, sure. it's, it's just like a level of demoralizing that isn't fun. Yeah. Okay. That was 49. 49. It's your turn, John, 48. to pick number 48. Guys, let's talk about Persona Strikers. No, I like that game. I, I, I can give you other games. I'm not asking for other games, Brian. I'm asking, <laughs> I'm asking for Persona Strike. No, like, I don't know. I just did not like how this game played. I really like this game. I'm, I, I've played... I've played some of this game and I am in two minds because if this game was made of a property I loved, I would be very happy. This is like a direct sequel to this game. This yeah. isn't like like a bullshit singing all night or like like a fighting game. This singing is all night's great. Dancing all night. Dancing, no, dancing okay, all night. Okay, okay. But you know what I mean? This is a direct narrative. No, yeah, like like it it, it feels like sequel. canon. It, yeah. it, it, it takes itself seriously in the narrative. All the characters you like are back. They have new costumes. They're they have life updates. Two of them have gone to college. Like this is a treat for fans of Persona 5 in a real way. And they have put the polish in. You have your animated like cutscene that you start with. You have like like, everything that was in the original game is here. They have beautiful, like, once-off drawings for um, the menus of each characters, like, where yeah. you kind of, like, equip them okay, with stuff. Okay, 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 okay. I'll, I'll leave it be for the time It's being. just too polished. Okay. Fair enough. I think then it's gotta be Loop Hero. Really? 
Yeah. I that's know, another not... that's another favorite. I know. Oh, God, <laughs> people are going to get so mad at me, but um I think Loop Hero was really cool and like it's I think the most impressive thing about it, it's just there's nothing else like this game. There's nothing else like it and it's even very difficult to describe, but basically you are going around this little automated loop and as you do you are building structures that change the properties of this loop this structure means that this kind of enemy is going to spawn more if this kind of enemy spawns more it's going to mean that you can get this item from them or get this much experience which lets you then make this building and if you put this building next to this building it's going to change the properties of it and like so if you put a bunch of like hillsides together it turns into a mountain and then you get loads of gold from the mountain and all this kind of stuff it's kind of an insane game and it's awesome like it is actually really really cool but there was just a point where like after like i'd say five or six hours with it i just kind of fell off and i never went back and so if people like maybe this is more my problem maybe there's hidden depth that i never quite got to but um yeah it just i think it's a really i think it's kind of amazing maybe this is too early for it maybe i'm making a mistake here you're the but, only one to fight for it yeah. yeah like i know it doesn't have support from either of you two and i also i don't know that it would if you guys had played it and so I think there's simp there there's way less less ambitious games on this list that made more of an impression on me. So it is cool. Um, I think people people should not take me cutting it this early as condemnation. It's it's a cool game, but again, just going by what I feel, I think it sort of has to go here. I think as a general rule, anything that isn't the first five games we cut, like you should make your own opinion up about them. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. Really, we're like, it's just we don't have enough of an emotional defense around it. Yeah. And that's what it is. Like, that's what this list comes down to. This is like the weird violence compromise of three people's feelings about 70 games. Like, mm-hmm. this is not, this is not even close to an objective list. And I say that every year. I yeah. get mad every year. But it's like, gather, gather your friends around and see how you do. Yeah. Okay. It's my turn for number 47. And I'm going to pick one of my games. Okay. Well, I love how Brian's like, I am going to do the honorable. Will, yeah. I'm going to do something amazing. You I will guys. take one of yeah. my toys now, out of my toy now, chest. Before, before I pick my game, I'm just going to read out some games here that I haven't played and know nothing about. I just want you both to think about them, okay? Okay. <laughs> Give me a sec. I like how Get, he's like presented this as a favor yeah. and now he's like trying to remind us how he is doing an amazing okay. thing and it's our fault. <laughs> These games have not been cut yet. Okay. Fights in tight spaces. Mm-hmm. Inscription. Mm-hmm. Monster Hunter Rise. Mundan. Outriders. Psychonauts 2, John. <laughs> <laughs> Psychonauts 2 is cool. <laughs> the Dark Pictures Anthology House of Ashes. The House in Fata Morgana. The Matrix Awakens and Unreal <laughs> Engine 5. And yeah, what the 3. fuck? <laughs> no, let it go higher. <laughs> the Procession to Calvary, Tormented Souls, and Neov. Come on now, Voice of Cards, The Isle of Dragon Roars. No. <laughs> no, that has some gorgeous illustration in it. I, I have cut loads of my games, just so we're clear. Which is why I'm cutting my game, Ender Lily's <laughs> Quietest of the Nights. You're doing us a favour. Yeah, I- Thank <laughs> you so much, Brian. Neil, let's just take a moment and just like, just throw flowers in his fucking feet. Thanks, Brian, for making a cut at like, what, 47? So, so, I, I, I did the honourable thing. and yeah. You have proved that you are the better person than both me yeah. and Neve. Mm-hmm. Ender Lilies is a very good, uh, as John would refer to him, a corner scratcher. I refer to him as, yes! as as the actual name, which is Search Action. Do you know, I actually have heard a lot of people call it Search Action lately. I think yeah. somehow that's taking over corner scratcher. Yeah. I'm going to keep saying corner scratcher. You can scratch whatever you want. Um, search Action. Uh, it's kind of a mishmash of a vanillaware style game in terms of its visuals and its map layout. Uh, but it's very much a search action game in which you play as a little girl in a mysterious, forgotten medieval world and everybody is cursed and in agony and you heal them and they go to the afterlife, but their ghost hangs around as a ability. Uh, Sometimes it's an attack, sometimes it's a double jump, sometimes it's a glide, but it is a Metroidvania (laughs) search action, corner scratcher, whatever you want to call it, in terms of you are gaining new abilities to explore more of the map 
I played it for about seven hours and I got to a bit where I'm stuck against a boss battle and I got grumpy and I haven't beaten the boss yet, but I will because I need to play more of this game, but I didn't and that's why it's at number 47. It's very good. I wish I liked it more. Okay. Niamh. Um, what about Alba, a wildlife adventure? Oh, jeez. <laughs> no, no, do you want me to like do you a favor no we can cut that poor little girl game that that's right. she was a little... <laughs> yeah Neve, cut the game that encourages little girls to follow their dreams go for yeah, it it's, it's a game about a girl taking photographs of animals go mm. ahead Neve. cut the cut the like one non-violent game on this list <laughs> that is that not true is female centric go for it <laughs> again not true <laughs> um just just she, she's all right john Hey, to... Brian, you fucking stay out of this. This is Neve's cut. Psychonauts 2, just say it. Um, John, John barely touched that thing. And he that's liked... not true. I like that game, and I played a decent amount of it. How much you play? I don't know. Five or six hours? Okay, that's a good number. Okay, look. It does not deserve to go yet. There's, that's yeah. game got, that game has that game has great writing and art direction. Okay. Um, What about Pikmin Bloom, the mobile game? Yeah, shitty mobile game. I mean... Man, I played so much of that game, but uh, I'm going to have to stop playing that soon. Pikmin Bloom it is. Okay, it's become a problem for Brian, and thus it's cut. Yeah, it's number making his okay. life worse. Let's see how many steps I have in Pikmin Bloom. Uh, I've been playing Pikmin Bloom for approximately six weeks now, and I have logged in every day. Oh no, Brian, you're in it. I know you're in it. I've not played it today, except I've opened it up now. My total steps are uh, two hundred and thirty thousand. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah, so I'm at nearly a quarter of a million steps. That's. Do you like it as a little fun pedometer? Absolutely. Okay, well maybe we should keep it here and cut some other like game, like <laughs> Psychonauts Two. <laughs> I think the Pikmin pedometer might be better than Psychonauts Two. No. Okay. Um, I think it might be better than. <laughs> um. Outrageous. Mundan. Monster Hunter Rise. No. Uh... T- Tales of Arise. No. <laughs> the Dark Pictures Anthology House of Ashes? No. Okay. <laughs> Although, you know, like, I, okay, okay, oh, you know, I think I can actually let that go. Um, here's the thing with the House of Ashes and why it's so shocking. I think it might be good. Um, <laughs> wow, that's a really good. Might be good. <laughs> I know. Look, I've, I only played like two hours of this, like, literally a couple of nights ago with Steph. Um, and what struck me was like the writing was like coherence and the characters were solid and their relationship dynamics. There's a couple in this who are not doing very good and that is literally every Dark Pictures game. But the reasons this couple aren't doing very good are very like real and complicated and like, oh, I don't know how you come back from that. That is that is really fucked up. And it's not just any one thing. It's like they both have different things in their lives that like kind of just like collapse on each other into this much bigger mess and you see like the effect it has there was barely anything supernatural or frightening for i think the first i want to say like nearly hour of this thing like there was some stuff that was suggested but like you didn't see anything and i was in i was like gripped and it was sort of shocking it's really cinematic in that like it has great camera work it has like it, it looks so well uh they do cast a white man as an Iraqi general and <laughs> no, don't do that. make him like dark skinned. Huh? Um, unless oh. I'm missing something here. So now that I've said that sentence out loud, maybe maybe this should have gone a little sooner. But um, for me, this feels like a genuine step up for the Dark Pictures anthologies. Uh, I, I am like maybe it'll shit the bed in the second half but the the creatures you're fighting are really fucking horrible and um, the way it does this really cool thing early on where basically Steph was controlling someone and um, they were have they were they were sleeping with someone and I was controlling another person and you know it was asymmetric so we weren't seeing yeah. the same thing and um she was like oh i'm playing as x person i'm just banging yeah was like, i'm just banging this dude and i was like cool who are you controlling and she was like this person and then my guy was like uh, she, so she was like uh, rachel and then my guy was like oh yeah rachel my wife <gasps> no and, was like, oh. and like moments like that are fucking cool but if you want to make the argument that i haven't really played enough of this game to really defend it this far into the list that's over fair. the pedometer <laughs> 
I mean, I think we should cut the shitty pedometer. I, I got some. I <laughs> got some cut that for you, bro. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, but, we cut the Pikmin pedometer then. Oh, okay. Over, like, John, how do you feel about it? Okay, which one is forty six <laughs> and which one is forty five? I mean, <laughs> like, like Brian, two in very fairness, important in, in numbers. Fairness, it made it made you go outside a lot, and I know that's easy yeah. to laugh at, but that is kind of yeah. cool. You I, know? I, I didn't like, since the surgery, and I have now. Yeah, and like you, you're meant to like you know. All my exercise apps are like, get 10,000 steps a day, motherfucker. And I'm like, oh, fucking fuck you. And, but, you know, you have one that you actually want to do. So, like, no, like, I'm okay with letting um, dark pictures go. Okay. I haven't played enough of it to push it further. Okay. Okay. Well, John, it's your pick now. So, you want to pick Pikmin? Pikmin Bloom? Uh, sure. Okay. So, that's Dark Pictures Anthology, House of Ashes at 46 and Pikmin Bloom at 45. Just want to know, if I played more of House of Ashes and it keeps it up, it I would actually probably push it a decent bit further on the list because it seems cool. But also, you know, Man of Medan was fucking shit. Yeah. So. Okay, it's my pick for number 44. Mm-hmm. I just want to <laughs> test some waters, okay? <laughs> I love it. We're getting into it now. Neev, how good is Procession to Calvary? Um, It is extremely interesting. I've never played a cutout animation game using Renaissance paintings and everything true. horrible that comes with those paintings. Okay. The Matrix Awakens an Unreal 5 engine experience. Uh, um, like, come on, like, like beyond... Okay, I can do an actual <laughs> honorable thing and throw one of mine in now if you need it, if you want the Matrix to go further, Neve. <laughs> like, I can actually be cool. <laughs> What's your cool suggestion? Uh, you can get rid of Scarlet Hollow. Okay, cool. Yeah, what the yeah. Fuck, what, what, what's Scarlet yeah. Hollow? Scarlet Hollow is a visual novel by... Um, oh, yeah. I know yeah. this one. And it's super cozy, super cool, incredible artwork, both in like the level of expression they get from very simple characters as well as just the town of Scarlet Hollow itself. Story's really simple. You're this out-of-towner coming to Scarlet Hollow to help your cousin with the funeral. The cousin was fucking brilliant. This was early access. So there was only one episode out when I played it. This probably went too far, but there was so much potential in what I played, and like your cousin is such an asshole. If this was a full game, she would, I I could see her being like best new character contender, like never gonna beat Lady D, but good. Um, just a really really interesting game, and I played a, you know, I played through the first episode, had a great time the entire time. Um, if you want a really spooky, spooky cozy is not a genre that gets a lot of representation, but this is it. Um, there's things not right in that town, and they're fun to discover. So yeah, that's it's a good game. Okay, that was my pick, Scarlett. That was your pick. Okay, Nia, your pick for number forty-three. Number forty-three. I am going to pick Outriders. Outriders had so much going for it, but it just could not do it, and that's what makes me sad about it. It is a um, third-person action shooter. At the start, it has a lot of cover mechanics, but as you kind of grow into your power set, it is the most delightfully violent third-person wave combat you can get. I played as a character that could automatically port behind uh, an enemy and just burst it open so you could see ribs and electricity and gore, and I had a arc slice that would cut down a wave of around 12 people coming to you. The guns had a satisfying, like, meaty explosive sound to them, and the armor sets were really fun and cool. The downside to Outriders is its story just kind of just shit the bed so badly. It was, like, going somewhere and then it just fizzled out completely by killing off interesting characters with no rhyme or reason to it. They introduce them and they die. Some of them die off screen. They give a cutscene to a guy who lifts you up by the troth and kind of looks like a Wesker style dude. He just dies off screen. Why would you do that? I don't understand. Not a throat lifter. A throat lifter. He was cool. Um, and like he's, he used his magic powers to throw you around and it was that kind of stuff where they would kind of build to something and it would just fizzle. They did a really cool thing, I think, with like world levels where it meant people of different skill level and levels kind of got the most out of that game. You could finish that game on world level three, or you can go up all the like all the way to the end and get some real challenge out of it. So it kind of catered to a lot of people, and that was a really clever way of doing it. A big problem with all of these kind of multiplayer shooters is the community's not there. Like very quickly afterwards, I was being. Um, 
put into teams with crossplay people and the connections were bad or they would kick you because they don't want to see you uh, they don't want to have a crossplay person with them and the connections were just kind of crappy but I spent a lot of time playing this game and playing with strangers and doing some really explosive violent combat and the environments looked really cool and so did a lot of the enemies I wish this game was better for Outriders I think we're in that phase of the list I wish this game was better. Yeah. yeah. Like this game, if this was a game re- released on the 360, this would be a very popular first person, like a third person shooter. But like releasing in 2021, it's you have to have something special to get that player base in. Because if your game relies on team based combat, you need a team. You know, that's that's what makes it fun. It isn't fun to play solo. Cool. What number is that, Brian? That was number 43, Outriders. John, it's your pick for number 42. 42, I'm going to cut Tormented Souls. This is a love letter to all those weird, fucked up PS2 survival horror games, and it nails that really well. This doesn't seem like a big team, and my god, they nailed the 3D creepy mansion you're in. It's a combination between, like, a mansion and a hospital, and oh, it just, it gets that so perfectly. Uh, The enemies are really fucked up and scary, and it's got some really like good modeling and good scares like it knows a lot of that stuff it falls down in the little ways like one of the things with survival horror is you know you hit l2 you raise your weapon you press r1 you fire that gun think of how that feels in resident evil you get like your muzzle flash you get like the little like even i think on the old games you'd get that little the clip coming out or the the casing coming out and hitting the ground and just there was like a flash of light and all this kind of stuff there was all these little touches that made firing a gun feel so good in old resident evil games you have a nail gun in this and it kind of goes and the gun comes out and it hits an enemy and the enemy barely reacts okay and little things like that it's in the corners that this game kind of falls apart. Um, I still really enjoyed my time with it, and I'm probably going to go back to it and spend more. It's very it's very hard, and there's also no map, which is oh, wow. really fucking difficult, unless I just haven't found one yet. Or there is a map, but it doesn't like track your position. You have to be like, okay, I think I'm here, and I have to go here. But, in, um, in that game, Evil Tonight, there's no map in that either, but they're proud of it. So maybe this is a thing. I don't know. At least Hollow Knight gave you an option. Oh yeah, but um, it's a cool game. This is definitely as far as it should go. Okay, it's my pick. Yeah, for forty-one, and I had one, and then I forgot it. John, can I cut Eastward? Oh yeah, yeah, it's time. Eastward at number forty-one. This game visually ten out of ten. Audio seven out of ten. Writing two out of ten. The writing in this game is so frustrating. The characters... It's not even that the writing is bad. There's just way too much of it. It needed to be edited. You talk to an NPC and you get trapped into a two-minute nonsense conversation where they just info dump you on nothing because someone wrote something witty and nobody told them to stop. I hate to say it. I, I think this is like one of the most disappointing games of the year. This is my... Mm most disappointing game of and i feel like that's so unfair because clearly so much work went into this game oh yeah no i, I was so excited to play it and i was so happy oh, at the beginning I, I was when i saw eastward was i was like oh my god fucking eastward's here you know and i got 80 percent through the story i only have like less than 10 hours left to play but i can't get myself to finish <laughs> oh, that's it such a bad feeling because i'm at this point where I'm, this is another time loop game as well towards the end <sighs> but i need to repeat a bunch of dialogue options and it's just like maybe they've patched it now so you can skip ahead but it's just frustrating to play it, it's disappointing because like even like the gameplay in this i think is pretty fun like yeah, it's, it's, not, it's decent. not bad and when you combine that with the look of it this should have been such a slam dunk like there's a whole earthbound undertale audience just primed to go here yeah i, I do and... feel bad that this game came out the same day around the same time as delta in chapter two yeah, it probably did get overshadowed. Also, a bit. Deltarune Chapter 2, not in our game of the year this year. Uh, we haven't played it. No. We but, uh, will, but we, we haven't. We have. Me and Brian are both going to play it over the holidays. That's the plan. That's the plan. It sucks. You know, I, I, I nearly feel bad letting it go because there's, there's a core here I love, but yeah, no, it shouldn't go any further than this. Yeah, like they, they work so hard on this game, just not in every aspect, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. But it looks so good. 
So number 40, Neve, it's your pick. Sometimes you need to take things away to make them good. Yeah. What about The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD? It is a HD remaster. Okay. That's as far as it goes. This is... I think I sent it to you as my second most played Switch game this year. Yeah. As someone who did not enjoy Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword in 2011, I sure did enjoy Skyward Sword HD remaster in 2021. <laughs> A huge improvement to the controls, to the camera, to every aspect of it. The middle section of that game is absolutely fantastic. It's just firing in all cylinders. Takes ages to get going and the ending is a bit underwhelming. But when that game is is at its best, it's doing so much. But number 40 is where it goes. Not to hit you with a 1-2 here, Brian. But Mario Party Superstars... I mean, is that not kind of a remix of previous Mario Party games? Yeah. <laughs> okay, it gets into the. It, okay, <laughs> it's in the top thirties. You go. It, it's, well, it's not in really. A, no, it's no. In, it's, it's like not. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's number thirty-nine. There's a three at the end of its name, I guess. Yeah. It's thirty-nine. Okay, Mario Party Superstar is at number thirty-nine. I much prefer this to Super Mario Party, which I found offered you too much, but with very little behind it. Mario Party Superstar is, is a nostalgia. Uh, 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 you know how Nintendo does their nostalgia and they can get it so wrong sometimes with the Switch Online expansion and they can get it so right with something like Super Mario, with Mario Party Superstars, where they pick and choose the best from the N64 and GameCube era and offer it to you and it's exactly what I wanted. I had a lot of fun playing this and I'm going to play a bit more over Christmas and that's where it ends. And my phone is ringing. Is this our takeaway? It is. Oh boy! Time for a break. But yeah, 39 is a fine number for Mario Party Superstars. I really enjoyed it, but this is where it stops. Neve. No, it's me. Oh, Brian. Okay, just to break the rules, we had dinner. It was very good. It's it's been it's been I would say an hour and a half since the last sentence you heard. That's that is yep. correct. What did you guys get for dinner? I don't know what it was, but it had um, duck, pineapple, and raisins in it. It was very nice. That's an explosion of flavors. Oh, yeah, that's crazy. Uh, we yeah. got Thai food and John and I really explored our boundaries by having pad thai. Mm, just I, I always like to think of me and Bruno Ryan, like we're the most vanilla people you could be <laughs> and there's not really a lot going on and we like it when our dietary choices express that. Oh yeah. Uninteresting to the point of functional. Absolutely. I like to try different things off the menu. Hell yeah. Not for me. Um, I've had a single beer, but wait until we break into that wine. Oh, yeah. So where we are with the numbers is, so we just did 39. So we've got, and we've done 70, so the 70 games total. So we've done 70 to 40, and we're into mm-hmm. the late 30s now. So we're nearly halfway through the list. But this is where it's going to get a bit weird and long. And at some point, wine is going to break out. At some point, each cut is going to start hurting us. Yeah. And one of those cuts will hurt so much that I'll go, wine break! And we yeah. have wine. <laughs> and it's my turn to make a cut. Yep. John, at number 38, can we go with inscription? Hell no. <gasps> Fuck off. Sorry. But John. John, the last time stuck. we spoke about that, yeah. you were real shitty about it. Yeah, 15 yep. hours, that's the whole playtime of the game. And you didn't even make it past the first section because of a bug. That kind of sounds cuttable to me. No, it wasn't a bug. It was a design oversight. I don't know what weird fucking, <laughs> like, shining twin shit you two have going on here. But you can fuck right off with that. Inscription's not going anywhere for a while. Because... Whoa. You were saying a lot of negative stuff to us in our chat. Okay, let's uh, let's, let's look, at, look down the list here. What can we uh, say some negative things about? Oh, shit. Moondawn. Fuck off. Come on. <laughs> Me of what's Moondawn? Hey, that Matrix bullshit is still here. Get that shit out of here. Not just yet. Not just yet. <laughs> Do you want to cut Moondawn? Well, what is it? Mundan is like a folk horror game and it's meant by one guy. Its charm is that all the um, textures are done by hand in like kind of graphite pencil. And it looks like 
like nothing you've really seen before. Sometimes it looks very illustrative. Other times when you get closer, you can see the tiling on the textures and you're kind of like, meh. Oh. Eh. But um, it has a talking goat's head that you can keep in a bag and a very, very polite young man who's going back to his home village to deal with the death of, I don't know, was it his father or his uncle? But then when he go- arrives, he realises that their soul has been trapped by an evil man in a hat and he has to... Okay, cool, so fucking cut it. Jesus. He has to save the day through <laughs> light <laughs> combat against man men made of hay and men who shoot bees at you. <laughs> but the important question is, is number 38 where it stays... Or does oh, it go further? I don't know. I, I like I like I like Mundan. I wasn't as high. I feel, I feel like you it. were kind of lukewarm on it. Yeah, it, it, like it's one of those things where to kind of because of the pencil kind of drawing in it, it's a, sometimes a little hard to navigate that world. Sometimes I didn't know if I was going the right way or if I was like breaking the game and hopping up a like a hill. Like it's very hard to navigate it. If you have a bad sense of direction, I think this game would be not very fun for you at all at all at all it does interesting stuff but i'm not I think, gonna fight anyone i, I think for we're, it. we're getting out of interesting waters do you know what i mean Neve, uh with with absolute respect to this game i'm gonna put it at number 38 but it's your turn next is that okay okay that's fine okay i'm okay with that mundan at number 38 i like the bee men they sound fun mm-hmm. they float off the ground and if you get close to them they shoot bees at you <laughs> and when the dogs bark they shoot bees at you <laughs> and there's soldiers in the snow and a yeti who will pull off your arms oh that, that is fun you can make coffee in a pot and you have a little bag <laughs> just a, a nice time but not the best time what are you cutting Eve? um toho luna nights I think you like this game more than I do, Brian. I'm okay with cutting it here. It's a very fun search action game, and it's a doujin to- toho game. Most of the doujin toho games aren't very good, and for some reason the toho games aren't on the Switch, but all the doujin games are. But if you had to play one toho doujin game, that's a hard thing to say. This, I, I would highly recommend Toho Luna Nights, in which you play as the maid girl. Do you know her? I can't, I can't remember. I think it's... it's- Sayaka or Sayuki or something close yeah, to that. Yeah, yeah, that sounds about right. She's Dio from JoJo. She pauses time and throws knives. And it's cool in that it uses that mechanic where you are exploring, but you're super weak and fragile. Like, damage does a shit ton to you, but you have to really focus on evasiveness, and part of that is the time freezing mechanic. And it is the right length. It's about four hours long. And the boss battle is... The final boss battle is very good. It's rock hard. Yeah. Did you ever beat the hidden boss battle? No. No, I don't think you're meant to. I'm sure someone did, but yeah, wow. Yeah, yeah they're, they're probably real fucked up. Yep. But we're not fucked up enough to play this game. No, um, we're very normal, as, yeah. as we've covered. Yeah, um, I don't think we could... Uh, no. It's a very good game. Uh, I think it originally came out on Steam but a couple of years ago, but it came out at the very end of last year on Switch, and that's why it's on our mm-hmm. list. I believe it's also on Game Pass. Wow, hell yeah. Well, there you go. Toho Luna Nights in at number 37. Great game. Really good game. So guys, I, th- I think it's time to, to get real here. I think we kind of need to stop fucking around. Matrix. The dream's got to end somewhere. Yeah, okay. I, Neve, let's just get it into the second half if okay. we have 70 games wouldn't it just be really fun to have the matrix experience whatever you want to call it on the other half of that 35? i'm gonna to need to hear like an actual argument for that um it looks very realistic mm. sometimes it does yeah <laughs> okay it is some campy ass fun and it was an impressive tech demo in the walkabout sections. That It's cool that it's an impressive tech demo, but for me, what I see on the rest of this list is good games, not impressive tech demos, and an impressive demo, tech demo is shit to a good game to me. 
Wow, that's very dismissive. I got a lot out of this experiment experience as a like digital photography game because the city is so looks and like full of detail. Like, I love going around Mega City. It looked great. Mm-hmm. You can like fly up to a window and it'll have an interior. Sometimes it doesn't fully work, but like they have little interiors in there. Uh, the lighting is lovely and you can do a lot with that camera and you can set up some really nice shots the matrix city is so weird it was just like where is this kind of meant to be and it's kind of like a mix of new york and sydney yeah i would see it as a photography game john personally i think that's horseshit neve i think you are bullshitting here i i took a lot of really nice i believe you took photos it's like a i think but i, I think the idea that game. has a photo mode and it looks nice no, the thing is, is not enough to propel it past no, actual the thing games is, with the photography game aspect there is another photography game on this which is alba a wildlife adventure and that is like like if we're gonna argue photography games maybe alba gets ahead of the matrix how many how many does this need to go two more games before it can make it into the top half like you wanted to yeah because it'd be really funny i i just i i don't i just i think there's too many good games on this list i think it's made it amazingly far for a tech demo i think it's done so well i don't think it goes further than this Okay, it's at 36, so that means, like, it beats so many games. <laughs> that were real good. Like, it beat Eastward, which is really funny. It was a fun demo. Okay, that's at number 36. The Matrix Awakens, an Unreal Engine 5 experience. <laughs> Keanu Reeves is like, is it real? I felt that. I really enjoyed when... Thomas Anderson introduced himself, but then later on Keanu Reeves introduced himself, who said, "I played Thomas Anderson." Okay, AKA well, Neo. maybe maybe I'll play this over the holidays, and I'll come back in January, and I'll be like, "Guys, we need to open that list back up." I think you will. I think you're gonna okay. have. I think you're gonna like. John, I think out of all of us, you would be the one who would defend this thing the most. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, because it's real special. Brian, what do you got? No, it's you. Me? Yeah. Did I not just cut the Matrix? No, Neve did. No, that was my coat. Oh, huh, okay. Shit. Guess you have a hard cut to me. No, I don't. Alba, a wildlife adventure. <laughs> <laughs> that was fucking easy. <laughs> I don't care about this stupid game. Uh, this is the only game left with a female lead, so I don't feel particularly comfortable cutting it. Uh, no, it's grand. <laughs> That's not true anyway. <laughs> That's not true, see? Yeah, yeah, so I know, I know, I'm, just, I'm lying. <laughs> I'm having a little lie, Brian. <laughs> a little lie. John, is fights in tight spaces good? Yeah. Is it the greatest game ever made? It's going to be number one on this list, I guarantee oh you. God. It's going to be the big, I didn't want to say anything. This is a game about fighting people in small spaces. That's everything I love. The two things, fighting and small spaces. Okay. This is number one. So John's number one games are all together. Inscription at number one. Yep. <laughs> Fights in tight spaces. At zero. At number one. Adios no more at number uh, one. Adios at minus two one. <laughs> uh, Monster Hunt, Hunter Rise at number one. Okay, fine, Alba. Alba's such a... It's such a sweet game. Like, I, I feel like, you know, they're really pandering to people with... The- <laughs> Who love cameras and birds. Yeah, yeah. who really give a Me. shit about something. Yeah, <laughs> Alba, a wildlife adventure at number 35. This is a charming delight of a game. It did nothing wrong to nobody. <laughs> but here it is at number 35. Because 35 is it- amazing. It beat the Matrix. <laughs> it's pretty good. Um, I, I really enjoy playing this game. And it's a, it's a short, sweet time. And you can do as much or as little as you want in it. And you get something out of it. It's a great time. You're just a young girl on an island taking photographs of wildlife and you jot down little bits of information about them and its heart is in its right place and it doesn't have a nasty bone in its body. It's just, it's a sweet game. It's too nice to survive is what I'm hearing. It kind of is, unfortunately. Brian? Okay, John. <laughs> this is not fair. I, I look. I we we all agreed the Matrix was silly. You can't turn again, Miss Kent, me this early. How good is Tales of Arise? There's definitely stuff on this list I could give you ahead of Tales of Arise. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Like what? Um, you know what? I struggled, but I'd be pretty happy to let go of Fantasian. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> you- <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> um, that fat house game. 
Yeah, Fata Morgana. <laughs> yeah. No. Um, oh my god. <laughs> hey, fuck off, Brian. You're always like, I'm not cutting that, I'm not cutting that. And then every year you're like, oh, John's getting stubborn again. You do it exactly as much as I do, you little shit. I know. Um, I can let go of fights in tight spaces. Oh, really? It's a good game. Like, it is a really good game and it, like, it fires those synapses in my brain and the dopamine releases. I can't say I've had like an emotional experience with it. It's just very satisfying. So if you don't know what this game is, it's basically like a John Wick simulator, a turn-based John Wick simulator that's all about maneuvering your opponents around the map in a way. So like one guy's about to shoot you, you use one, you, it's a card-based game. So you pick your grapple card and you switch places with another bad guy and then he gets shot and it makes you feel real cool. Um. It's not the best deck builder I've played this year, and it's like there's not as much variety in the kind of actions you can do as I would like, but it's extremely solid. And if you like, you know, run based card based games, especially like with a real heavy melee slant, the animation's good and satisfying, and it's just, it's, it is, it, it, it knows what it's doing, and it's a good time. Okay. A very, very competent game. That's Fights in Tight Spaces at number 34. Neil, it's your turn to pick number 33. Um, how are we feeling about Adios? Adios is real good. Like that, that Adios was a very emotional experience for me. It hit hard. Okay. I can give you a game, Neve. I don't need. I don't need a game. Okay. I don't need one yet. <laughs> Sounds to me like you might need a game. Yeah. <laughs> um. Okay. I'm gonna cut the procession to Calvary. This game looks so cool. It does. And that's the best thing about it. Like it it is made out of Renaissance paintings with um cutout animation and the cutout animation with that style of painting is so funny. Loads of moments of laughing out loud. You walk into a scene and someone is being roasted on a spit, there is other people <laughs> being being crucified while like while a little flute player <laughs> dances uh, among you. Um, and the stuff you have to do is just really silly and funny, like find socks for someone or um, <laughs> bring, some, bring a priest a sock. <laughs> oh. Oh. Uh, uh, um, that is historically mm. accurate, unfortunately. Yeah, unfortunately. Okay. <laughs> Well, John, when you make all that fuss about it, it makes it seem a little worse. You know, Neve, all I really did was make noises after the words <laughs> you said. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's of its time period. <laughs> you meet a, a room full of demons with cat faces um, who are too fun. You need to try and find a special pearl from them. But it, it has that issue that a lot of like point and click adventures do where sometimes it is obtuse as hell and you can miss things just because you haven't clicked in the right place or a door isn't so obviously clear for you to go in. I had to look up a guide once or twice, but the comedy comes from the darkness of that time period. Like there is people dying, there is a war and you are a knight who has not finished killing. So you are going on an adventure to kill some more and you see a lot of fucked up shit. So yeah, everything horrible from a Renaissance painting put into a video game with some great humor on top of it. It looks like a nightmare, but also seems super cool. Hey, that's number 33. John, it's your pick. Uh, gonna go with Omori. Whoa. Um, Omori is the Omocat Kickstarter game that came out. Uh, there's things I really like about this game and things I really do not like about this game. And it all balances out to be a pretty good time. I have not beat it still. And um, when the game hits, it really, really hits. And then where it misses, I think it misses in the main place. I think it misses in the dialogue. I think the dialogue is very indie video gamey in like I, I a very kind of amateurish kind of way but I think the general vibe and look of it really helped that a lot like it, it it is going for something weird and different like there's nothing that looks like the battles of this game or has that kind of similar thing there's a really cool fight with a girl in a church that I appreciated um and it's cool it's weird it is imperfect and flawed but there is something kind of there is something like a little ir- irresistible about it. Do you see it's on? It released on Switch recently, didn't it, Brian? It's coming out next year on the Switch. Yeah, already next oh, year. Oh, it was announced. Yeah, do you think you yeah. give it a shot? I will, because I tried it again on the Mac, and it's still formatted ex- extremely bad. Yeah. Where you go into full screen, and it has a big giant border around it, 
And then when you try to play it at double res, it like it, the game is not fit. It doesn't something's fit not working right. No, because I had the same problems. But yeah, that's that's what I will call. Yeah, it's my go at number thirty one. Solar Ash. Really? Yeah, I enjoyed this game. I- uh, John's smiling because John wanted nothing to do with this fucker. I just never liked how it looked, okay? John, I think you really like it. It's pretty good. Really? No. Okay. <laughs> uh, as someone who preferred the Pathless, this game was just, it's just bad timing. It, it, it can't help but be so similar to this other game that came out less than a year ago that has a very similar gameplay style and is from the same publisher it just has the same energy in some aspects. I beat it last week. I played it over three sittings and I enjoyed it, but I'm not going to think about it. Not in the same way I'm going to think about um, Hyperlight Drifter, which I would I do actually want to replay because I really enjoyed Hyperlight Drifter. It's from the same game of the year. It's from the same developer as Heart Machine. Um, it was an interesting follow up in that, you know, they went from 2D to 3D and managed to successfully kind of transition into that Z depth but it didn't excite me enough to go any further with it unfortunately so that's why solar ash is number 31 okay and, and Neve, this is the last one in the 30s okay what is it how do we feel about a john did you play a i didn't play a brian i'm sorry i I can give it if if you're willing to support it, I will support you on that. I thought it was cool. A is our number thirtieth game of the year. A is one of the funniest things I've ever played. This is the game I wanted Heart Chain Kitty to be, in that it's just like a really strange game that someone made without any understanding or context or didn't give a fuck. Put it up on the eShop because apparently you can publish a game on the eShop very easily. It's, it would seem so. This poor guy, after I talked about A, he put his Twitter on private. Really? Oh, no. Uh, Do you think we did that? I don't know. if Like, I didn't say anything about him or in any of the development. Some people get real spooked real easy with that yeah. kind of thing. And so my apologies to the developer um, and anyone... Uh, you know, in close proximity to the developer. Um, I love A. I thought it was so fucking funny. Um, I've played it, and then last weekend we had some company over, and I made one of the others play it, and I sat and watched, and it was still so fucking funny. You fight Dracula at the end of the game. That's brilliant. But he's really small. And this is as far as it goes. Yeah, you play as a weird little worm, soul, spirit, and it's kind of like the binding, or not the binding, but it's kind of like Super Meat Boy, but like this game shouldn't exist, but it does. And I'm so glad I got to play it. A. Yeah, it seems great. I have it downloaded, but yeah. <laughs> it's so fucking funny. I'm going to call Monster Hunter Rise. <gasps> Damn. Um, this is a good game. Monster Hunter Rise is really, really cool. Uh, my favorite is the Kezu, and it looks like this. Oh, that has a. Yeah. Oh dear. Yep. Uh that's a, a weird looking like leech it, leech dragon. It's basically a prototype Ava or a mass production Ava from End of Evangelion. Yeah. And um they're great. Uh this game does a lot of really interesting things. Um the dog companion is really cool. Um uh, it it's it works so much better on a Switch than it should. It's a lot more fast paced and like kind of, I would nearly say arcadey than Monster Hunter World, but I love the pace of Monster Hunter World. I love that just grueling, grueling pace. And so this was my less preferred game. Um, I hear that like, you know, a lot they do a lot of cool shit in the final boss battle. I hit credits on this game. Uh, I got like 35 hours in and hit credits and then I said that, and people were like, well, you know, it's only really the beginning. And I get that, but they that, come on, 35 hours. And I've played, like, 100 hours of Monster Hunter World. Uh, like, I, I I get it. But um, it is a good game. Very, very good. I don't think, you know, the Monster Hunter Studio, they know what they're doing. They take swings. There's some misses in this. Like, uh, there's a kind of terror defense mode that just really sucks. Um, I think they're called Rampages. But, I mean, Monster Hunter is all about the monsters, obviously, and a lot of the monsters they introduce in this are just really fucking cool. 
and I had a really good time with it. Maybe I'll play more of it. I might just go back to World, but yeah, I think this is the right spot for it. It's a very good game. At number 29, Monster Hunter Rise. Okay, so we're into the 20s now. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay, it's my pick. How hard are you on Fantasia, Neve? I think we can let Fantasia go. Okay. The, the best thing about Fantasia is it, it uses real models for the backgrounds. Yeah. Like real hand sculpted models, like little houses, airships, every little thing. When you go inside a building, like into like um, an item shop, they have like modeled that with their human hands <laughs> like it is a physical model with little props and everything and they're all so beautiful which makes the worst thing about Fantasian is they have photographed these models so poorly and they are so pixelated in like in the close-ups that it is just mind-boggling because a lot of the marketing for this game like it is like it is the creator of Final Fantasy it is uh the composers uh, of the original Final Fantasies as well. So it has this like pedigree, but what they pushed about it was this handcrafted model background and it is not working. <laughs> like the, they have photographed it badly and that is just That's such a sin. Devastating. It is so devastating. Like it is so pixelated and so blurry. The other kind of weak thing for me, like the story is like kind of whatever. The enemy variety was really poor, and ultimately I found the combat was just simplistic to the point of kind of being kind of boring. The kind of thing that makes this stand out a little is you can bank encounters, so you can like save up different encounters and then do them all in one go, so you get a nice boost of XP maybe before a boss or later on. But honestly, the only reason I found myself doing that is it's slow enough to, like, the movement speed and the combat speed is so slow to get around that to just avoid the stopping to do these slow battles, I would just bank them and then just do them all in one go and get them out of the way. Right. So it nearly felt like a solution to their boring combat mm. rather than a add-on to the combat. Hmm. Okay. Seems like the pros outweigh the cons. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I finished uh, part one. I did not buy part two because I heard it was twice as long and it already was very long. Okay, gotcha. Whose cut is it now? It's Neve's cut. Okay. Ooh, we're getting into it now, aren't we? Yeah. John, adios. We gotta... <laughs> Why? Because you guys keep bringing it up. Well, like... What about Aliens Firestorm Elite? Fireteam Elite. Fireteam Elite. That... I don't know. That brings the epic scale of the Alien and Prometheus movies to a video game and a, a soundtrack that is so... Cool. Persona 5 Strikers. Oh. <laughs> That's where it's hurting. Uh... John Fathouse. Come on. No, Fathouse is good. <laughs> <laughs> this is the house in Fat and Morgana. Well, what about the Grace Ace Attorney Chronicles? Fuck off, Eve. <laughs> <laughs> Halo Infinite. Let's cut Halo Infinite. You know what? Let's just let's just do a couple in a row. Halo Infinite, Metroid Dread, uh, <laughs> Ratchet and Clank Rift, Resident Evil Village. Come on, let's just get rid of them. But well, fuck it, it doesn't matter. Let's let's all be home in bed in like twenty minutes. How about that? John Disco Elysium, the final cut. How did you feel about that? Yeah, we can cut that. Okay. Really? No. <laughs> okay. Neve, you have not cut a lot so far. Okay. 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 Um, let me see. Okay, let's cut Aliens Fireteam Elite. I'm not happy about this, but... We're getting into unhappy territory. There's yeah. no there's no easy cuts left. This is a surprisingly good wave-based game. When you think of aliens, you think of a lot of aliens. And this sure has it. It has, like, dog ones that run at you. And when you shoot them, they do this cool, like, skid across the floor because they're still trying to get to you. <laughs> They have the big, like, giant aliens that come out of vents and will attack your squad mates from behind and then just run away. And you will never see it. You will just see that they're in danger and turn around and you'll see the back of an alien running into a vent. It is one of those games where you can't stop and, like, I don't know, make a cup of tea or get something. Like, I couldn't even, like, readjust my Spotify playlist or something because... Aliens can just come from behind you all of a sudden. So you need your tree person team to kind of like watch your back. So there's a really good sense of like 
just alien where you're moving through these like alien spaces and you're just kind of looking behind you and you're also like being kind of managing how you kill things because aliens have acid for blood and that will do you damage so you got to keep yourself safe and sometimes those little dog aliens explode into goo i had a lot of fun playing this online when i could get a game and that's where this game falls down like a lot of them that sucks I did see recently that it has come to Game Pass, and I think that will give it a good Th- That boom. will, totally. Yeah. yeah. Um, I hope it gets cross-play, because when I was playing it as well, it didn't have cross-play at the time. And I think if you're going to do a a co-op online game, you need to put cross-play in it for any sense of longevity. Like, I, pl- I was playing this a week after release, and it was it was hard to get games on, a, on the PS5, and that's like crossover play with PS4 community. So... I really I liked a lot about this because I'm an Alien fan. That soundtrack is amazing. Once that inevitably releases on a vinyl somewhere, I will buy it. It is very good. Cool. But yeah, sad to see it go. I wish this game. I, I Sounds wish. like you want this game to be okay. Yeah, because like they model some beautiful stuff, and it brings about like it brings in the Prometheus stuff really well. And there's like giant four like like heads and shit, and you're just like people. Your squad makes stop and look around themselves, and the synthetics from Alien Isolation are enemy in it. It is a treat for Aliens fans, but it is, you know, do you risk being able to play that? That is number twenty-seven, Aliens Fire Team Elise. John, it's your pick. Okay, I want to take the temperature on two games here. First off, are we coming close to being ready to lose Persona Strikers? Oh yeah, very close. Are we there? Almost. Neve, you haven't talked about Sable yet. And yeah. I think that's kind of that's you your baby to, to that's your baby to fight for or not. Yeah. Um, I would like to keep Sable longer. Sable is one of these Sable's kind of difficult because I find it hard to talk about it in a way, and I know that's not very helpful, but um, it is a cozy game, which is not a genre of game I particularly enjoy, but this one just, like, clicked for me. I am hearing you are not ready to let Sable Yeah, go. no, I'm not I'm not ready. Okay, I, I will let go Tales of Arise. Okay. Okay. Um, Tales of Arise... The time I spent with it was like surprising in a number of ways. One, I think the combat is super interesting. It's basically, it's kind of like a character action game slowed down to like 0.65 speed. And it means you really get to think about like the different ways your effects are going to like, the, the different ways your attacks are going to affect an enemy and the states it's going to put them in and what you want to follow up with this, with this, with this. And at its best, it starts to feel like a slow motion anime fighter where you're calling in assists and doing all this kind of stuff. And it it feels good. But then on top of that as well, you have this setup and these characters that feel really anime to begin with. Like they, they, they feel like, you know, you're kind of cookie cutter. I'm the good hero and I'm the saucy Sundare. And so quickly, I feel like they prove themselves as like just more than that and cool and fun to the point that every time an optional cutscene came up on screen, I wanted to watch it because I just wanted to hear these people interact. And it was great. Um, I don't think with the amount of it I've played, because this is like a 60 hour game that I may be six or seven hours into, with the amount I've played, I don't think I can in good conscience put it any further than this. But yeah, like... This game has gotten a lot of praise from people who love Tales games, but also people who don't love those games. And I think it's deserved. I think it's, it seems like a really cool JRPG. Unfortunately, this is as far as it goes, but it's good. Okay. Okay. I was just collecting myself on my, my heart and my soul. Why? At number 25, Persona 5 Strikers. Why are you doing this? Why are you cutting it? Neve. You're not saying that because you think Persona is a good game. You're like, no, it's pissing off John. Let's keep no, it. No, no. Like, I, I like, can see your grin, Neve. No, <laughs> I just smile when I feel awkward. <laughs> Me too. Um, I, there's parts of this I wasn't in love with, but I think it's like, I think the parts of it that are good. The well, part- Okay, I'm going to get real cold here. Okay. As someone who fucking played the game, Neve. <laughs> I played the game. I spent a whole fucking day playing it. <laughs> As someone who spent... Probably that exact same amount of time not enjoying it, I think. Look at the rest of this list. Okay. This is me, like, making a decision 
you know how before we were like, you know, I'm just going to be humble and uh, offer this mm-hmm. game upon you. This is me. This was my sixth favorite game of 2021. Wow. Oh, well, like, I mean, if you this feel... Is what, I thought he would get this into the top 10. This is why I'm no, shocked. Okay. No, well, no fucking I thought okay. that I thought this would okay. go into top 10, and I would be happy for Strikers to go into top 10. Why do you like it so much? I just think, like, like I live with a Persona 5 fan who honestly thinks Strikers is better than Persona 5. In some ways it is. It gives the characters way more time to, like grow and flesh out especially characters who kind of came late game in persona 5 yeah like haru she's great and she's your favorite friend if you guys want to keep it on the list okay thank we you. can we like i'm not gonna force i didn't i genuinely didn't know that you guys feel that strongly about persona strikers i have watched this the entirety of these being played and i've spent a whole day playing it and i think it's too early to cut persona okay. 5 strikers okay okay so then i would i would give up stuff first like debt loop <laughs> oh my god okay you know what? it's my turn and i played this game debt loop at number 25 come on none of us yeah wait why should debt loop be bef- like because i think debt loop is an infinitely better game than persona 5 but do you love it i don't love it but like but i love chasm persona- between you don't do you love persona 5 I love Persona 5 Jesus Strikers. Jesus Christ. It's one oh of my, my favorite God. games this year. And so unfortunately... I feel like I'm getting the fucking wool pulled over my John, eyes John, you here. have so many games left. You're doing fine. You have loads of games, Brian. You have loads of fucking games. Stop saying that. I know, but Deathloop should be at number 25. Like, come on. Like, hang on. Like, just give me a moment to look at this list. <laughs> the only one who like really enjoyed it. And like, the thing is, I, I didn't love Deathloop. Like, you're right. I really liked it. I just Persona Strike. I just, oh, but that is kind of where we're at, right? Like yeah. I'm looking at this list, and it's it's getting tight, and I feel like this is early for it to be getting Voice of Cards. <laughs> <laughs> like maybe you said you would sacrifice some of your games to save Persona Five. Well, like, like, okay. Here's here's my thing. I was the person looking forward the most to Debt Loop. I came to you when I first started Debt Loop, and I was just like, "This game could be, the yeah, yeah you're like, so this could, like, I was so, so hype about this game. I was so excited, and like, Voice of Cards didn't live up to expectations, but it didn't disappoint me in the same painful way that Death Loop disappointed me. So I don't know. Here's my argument for Death Loop. Okay. I, I agree with you in the death loop. I think is a disappoint. I think there is another game on this list that does the idea of death loop so much infinitely better than death loop. I think death loop is a pretty fun arcadey shooter. Like I, like for what it is, I like what it is. I like playing death loop. I like using the powers. I actually really enjoyed like the final trying to achieve the final run, and I fucked that up like five times because I'm terrible, and. I liked that. I, I like. I got value from Deathloop, and like I did too. I loved how it looked. I really liked the big, weird kind of old style buildings on the rock edge, and mm-hmm. just like all those interiors with the cool eyes on TVs and stuff. Do you know one thing about Deathloop's interiors? Go on. I feel like you do your tutorial level. You come into that first interior, and mm-hmm. it's all like the kind of seventies, kind of like new age. I think that's the best interior you see that entire game. I I actually went back to that location and the doors are closed. You can't go there. What the the beach area? Were you the beach? No, the beach. Uh, the so you go in and I think you wake up on the beach and then yeah. you go up to a house. It's the place where Juliana. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. That yeah. that house is like, I to me that is the best death loop looks. You don't think so? There were some places I liked. I liked that guy's like shooting arcade where he he made like um, the kind of tiered house that you go through to find him. One the, of the visionaries. The alien thing. Yeah. Yeah. That one. That I liked okay, that. Yeah. I also liked uh, the one where it was like TVs with eyes and just like severed heads and stuff. There were there's cool aesthetic. Like uh, the one thing I will never fault that loop on is the design and the environmental design language. Like they have made a whole pile of beautiful props for this game. And the fashion is great and the character design is great. The combat, I enjoyed it to a degree. And then the stealth got extremely boring. I got so powerful that it didn't matter. Oh, me too. I got like two of the perks, which was like one was just reload instantly. Mm -hmm. And the other was aim further. And like the auto lock on that game is so insane that it just, it kind of, 
I could kill like seven people like in a standoff battle. Oh, okay, where like where are we at? What are we thinking? If I was to throw anything else out there, I'm, I would throw Psychonauts 2. Simply because I didn't play too much of it because it's just not for me. I was playing it and I was just like, this is nice. And then I turned it off. <laughs> Psychonauts 2 is cool. And I think it's weird and um, weird and ambitious in a lot of ways. I think um, the like idea behind Psychonauts has always been great, but I love the art style of this game so much. And like, I'll admit, I'm not like the biggest Psychonauts fan. And like, even there was parts of this game that I didn't really love playing. I'm not that big, like a 3D platformer guy, mm. but there is a personality and style to this and like an earnestness to the writing. Like it's, it is funny without being like sarcastic, you know, like yeah. it, it commits to what it is and it kind of owns it in a way that I really respect and like I don't need to, to go that much further I just this would feel a little early for me with Psychonauts and I feel that too it is like a game that has like it is so driven and sing in its singular style but again I'm not I'm not a treaty platforming person either and there's another one on this list that I way more prefer if only I had played it if only Brian had played it. You gotta get yourself a Series S, Brian. Yeah, I do. Uh, I don't know, because like, I feel like with Deathloop and Psychonauts, my argument for them is that they are aesthetically super strong. If I was going to throw anything else out there, whose cut is this? I think it was it mine. Yeah. Shit, yeah, whose cut? Mm. So. No, wait, it's my cut. It's your cut. Is it? Are yeah. you sure? Yeah, it's my cut. Oh, yeah, because I took Tales of Arise. Right. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Okay. It's my cut, and I haven't spoken in a while. Um, <laughs> so, John, you definitely like Inscription now. You didn't before, but now you like it. I like that's not fair because, like, hey, I, hey, I didn't like Bloodborne before, and now I love it. So, it, it, it no, Inscription, was, Inscription has problems, but like Inscription at its strongest is some of the best shit I've played this year. Okay. And like, yeah, I did have problems with it, and I did run into like shit with it, but. It is one of the best games this year, even okay. with that shit. Okay. Brian cut Voice of Cards. You sure? Yeah. At number 25, Voice of Cards, The Isle Dragon Roars. Lovely character artwork. I really like the card aesthetic. I thought it was a clever way to present a game with strip back design sensibilities. Um, painfully slow and a very unchallenging combat system hmm. and kind of didn't bring anything I would want or look for from a Yoko Taro experience and I know some people are like oh it's not a full Yoko Taro game whatever they market it that way they really market it that way and it doesn't have any of that stuff in it and even if it didn't and the story was strong I'd be happy but I felt the game didn't do enough to kind of endear me to those characters or get me involved to kind of make those twists toward the end kind of land like they weren't bad they were just kind of generic and I wasn't emotionally invested enough in that narrative for it to really hit again character artwork great the localization fantastic really clever witty dialogue some of it just makes you laugh out loud and I really loved the uh, muscle worship stuff it was weird but in a good way Okay, Voice of Cards, Isle of Dragon Roars at number 25. Neve, it's your pick for number 24. Okay. Fuck. Well, not your pick, but your turn to motivate something that happens. <laughs> oh my god, we're only at number 25. Like, oh. it's Psychonauts 2. Uh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I haven't played enough I, like, to fight I, for it. My, my, energy, my energy bar for Psychonauts 2 is empty. Mm -hmm. Like, I can't I can't fight this hard for a game that I don't love. I think, you know, maybe it deserves better, but I, I'm sure that's the case with multiple items on this list, yeah, right? Yeah, absolutely. This is the way this falls. I can, feel a f I can feel two or three games on this list that, like, have give. Do you know what I mean? Where it's yeah. like, like, I know the shit that's not going till much later, but... Psychonauts 2, it's really imaginative. It's an absolutely beautiful game. It has an aesthetic unlike anything else out there. And, like, that's cool because Psychonauts 1 is a fucking ugly game. <laughs> um, it is not a nice looking game. It's like an. It's, it was maybe better looking in the day, but it's, it's, a, it's a tough style. Like, 
tough clash between what the technology could do and what they were going for. Psychonauts 2 looks like a Muppet show. Uh, everything in that looks just like this weird, beautiful character, and it's great. It's funny, and like the first, even just the first level is so ambitious and weird with what it's going for, and they are constantly trying stuff like that. Not all of it works for me, and um, some of it gets a little too like literal and like, whoa, it's a thought connection or whatever, but it's still cool, and I think they really pulled off Psychonauts well, like really, really well. Um, to me, there are other platformers on this list that I would lose instead of it, but I know I'm not winning that fight. So, Psychonauts 2. This is this is as far as it goes. Okay. John, it's your pick for 23. I am cutting... Mm... Adios. Oh my god. Adios is absolutely fantastic. Um, it is an hour and a half. You are a pig farmer... You have been working for the Mafia for about a decade and the dude comes up to you and what he does is he brings chopped up bodies and you feed them to the pigs. And that's what happens. And you tell him, you don't want to do this anymore. And he's like, ah, come on, you don't don't mean that. And these two guys have such a warmth and such a like relationship with each other. Like they're, they're really friendly and they're good. And the afternoon goes on, they play horseshoes, they like, you know, they shovel shit together, they just hang out. But slowly this like, this element of finality just creeps into their conversation and you start to realize that like the reason the mafia guy is convincing you to stay isn't so much that like he needs your business, but because he's your friend and he knows what's going to happen if you leave. He knows the only way this could go down. Then after that, like there's a section where he leaves. He's like, okay, I'm going to be back this evening. And you're just left on the farm. And all you have to do is your final to-do list before he comes back. And it's fucking brilliant. It's really poignant and emotional. And like this character has done things to land themselves in this situation. And they don't get like easy fixes. It's not like all their relationships get mended. Some of them get just left on these real jagged ends. And it's, it's painful, you know. And there's such an element of like, holy shit, like, this is how I would spend the final couple of, you know, hours of my life. And then it just concludes really minimally and really beautifully. And I think this is about the right time for it because this is like, you know, this is a one hour game by one person. And I don't think it's going to land with everyone, but it absolutely landed with me. And if this comes out, if this like, it's on PC right now, I hope it gets like a console re-release or something. It's the same dude who did that Paratropic game, Brian. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so hopefully it gets a release. And if they do, people should play it because it's, it's fucking awesome. And I'm sad to see it go, but we are just in that territory, right? Like everything's going to hurt from this point. Yeah. Adios at number 23. Adios, adios. See, that was pretty good. That was pretty good. Yeah. It's my pick for number 22. Mm-hmm. Jesus, okay. Okay, I need to... I just need to know how you feel about It Takes Two. I think you could cut it. I mean, I think we could cut it. I think, like, there's, there's, there could be debates to be had, but, like, I don't feel a need to go to bat for it, necessarily. Yeah. It's a really good game. It yeah, is? Okay. it is surprisingly dense with, like different mechanics and different locations and it is very pretty i love moon baboon he was very fun he was very good you're trying to take down his spaceship and being a very little person inside it and messing with his foot pedals while john was doing the difficult work of dancing around some like bullet hell stuff <laughs> <laughs> was pretty fun everything good. about this That's game good. is so much better than you think it would be yeah everything and this is from the developers of a way out and brothers tale of two sons yeah. somehow yeah Although okay. I love Brothers. I thought Brothers was great. I like Brothers as well. This is Neo, a Neo, game. Neo does not like Brothers. I don't know. Just I don't know what the deal is there. I've never asked, but I'm scared <laughs> too. Yeah. But yeah, it, it takes two. It's a really, really good game. I don't think it has like the emotional pull on any of us that you need to to really like... I don't have a kid and I haven't been divorced. Yeah. I'll give it time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just see how you get on. Fingers crossed. Maybe this will hit harder in okay. 20 years' time. Do I have your blessing to put It Takes Two at number 22? Yeah. Yep. That's two twos. It's being cut because of the horny book. Didn't like him. Now that he's on the table, I feel like we should keep it longer. <laughs> <laughs> Neve, it's your pick. Oh, no. Here's I don't know cut. what to call. Uh, 
And this means that it's at number 21, which means whatever this game is doesn't get into our top 20. <gasps> that's the Ryan. second most... The, no, it's the third most tragic number. Yeah. Because number 11 and number 6 are worse. <laughs> oh, yeah. John, how are you feeling about the house in Fata Morgana? I can, I can let the house in Fata Morgana go. Um, I think this is a done, done really well for it. Um, this game is weird and long and it takes an investment and like you're playing this game for several hours before it starts to peel back what it is. But the biggest argument I could make for it is this game really genuinely freaked the fuck out of me. And that's that's not easy to do with video games because I play a lot of scary video games and especially in the visual novel. And it did it in a way that was not like, not cheap, not gory, just the uncomfortable psychology of what was happening in the scene was just so unsettling and like the implications for all the characters and like the kind of scenario they were in was brilliant and I still have a long way to go in this game I think it's like 60 hours or something but um it really hit me it it, it made me uncomfortable in a way that the games very rarely do yeah it it's it's some good shit this is as far as it should go okay. for sure at number 21 well, in that case, we're going to break out the wine in a minute, Niamh. Hell yeah. But before we do that, we need to go through games 70 to 21. And I've Jesus. broken them into three sections. Okay. Niamh, you want to start there from 70 to 55? <sighs> okay. At number 70 is 12 minutes. At number 69 is Cyberpunk 2077. Oh my God. <laughs> At number 68 is Biomutant. At 67, Kazi and the Wild Masks. At 66, The Ascent. At 65, Sky, Children of the Light. At 64, Maquette. At 63, Haven. At 62, Heart Chain Kitty. At 61, Evil Tonight. At 60, Death's Door. Will I keep going? Yeah. Um, at 59 is Ponpu. At 58 is Shin Megami Tensei 3, Nocturne HD Remaster. At 57 is Returnal. At 56 is Wilderment. At 55 is Virtual Fighter 5 Ultimate Showdown. Johnny, you want to take the next batch? Uh, at number 54 is Chicory. At number 53 is Kid A. Mincy? Mincia? Kid A. Amnesia. Amne am uh, Amnesia Exhibition. Number 52 is Dojeron. At number 51, Fuga Melodies of Steel. 50 is Pac Man 99. 49 is Dungeon Encounters, 48 is Loop Hero, 47 is Ender Lilies, Quietus of the Nights, 46 is the Dark Pictures Anthology, House of Ashes, 45 is Pikmin Bloom, Mobile Game, number 44 is Scarlet Hollow, number 43 is Outriders, number 42 is Tormented Souls, number 41 is Eastward, number 40 is Legend of Zelda, Skyward Sword, HD Remaster. Okay, and then I got 39 to 21, which is number 39, Mario Party Superstars, Number 38, Mondan. Number 37, Toho Luna Nights. Number 36, The Matrix Awakens, an <laughs> Unreal Engine 5 experience. What are we doing? At number 5, Alba, a wildlife adventure. God, this is where it's getting real weird. Okay, Alba, a wildlife adventure. 34, Fights in Tight Spaces. Number 33, The Procession to Calvary. Number 32, Omari. Number 31, Solar Ash. Number 30, A. Number 29, Monster Hunter Rise. Number 28, Fantasian. Number 27, Aliens Fireteam Unleashed. Number 26, Tales of Arise. Number 25, Voice of Cards The Isle Dragon Roars. Number 24, Psychonauts 2. Number 23, Adios. Number 22, It Takes Two. And at number 21, the house in Fata Morgana. We're about to start the top 20, but let's get the wine flowing. Hey, okay. How are you guys feeling about the list so far? I think I let Voice of Cards get too far. To be honest. I feel like I just took like intense damage from that statement. <laughs> oh yeah, don't forget. Always stop by the toilet if you find one, especially before boss fights. You need time to get your thoughts in order. Uh, so, you know, save your damn game. The wine has been poured. Hell yeah. We have a glass in each hand. Mm -hmm. We're going to need it because we are at the last 20 games. Oh, the top 20 games. Um, 
Will I read them out in alphabetical order? Yeah, go for Okay, it. so this is what we haven't cut, but it's gonna happen. We have Boomerang X, Bravely Default 2, Deathloop, motherfucker, Disco Elysium, the final cut, <laughs> Guilty Gear Strive, Halo Infinite, Inscription, Little Nightmares 2, Lost Judgment, Metroid Dread, No More Heroes 3, Persona 5 Strikers, Ratchet and Clank, Rift Apart, Resident Evil Village, Sable, Shin Megami Tensei 5, The Forgotten City, The Great Ace Attorney Chronicles, and Tori 3D and Tori 2 combined. So that's 20 games. 20 games. That's a good 20 games. That, yeah. is, that is a really solid 20 games. And it's games. a good slice of a variety of different yeah, games. Yeah, there's so much in there. Like, before we get into this, you could pick up any one of these and you would have a good time. Yeah, totally. But whose turn is it to cut? I can't remember. <laughs> the last one that was cut <laughs> was, was the house in F- Fata Morgana um, at number 21. Can we remember who said that? It wasn't me. I might have been Brian. No, I said it takes two. I suggested so, it takes two. Neil suggested Fata Morgana and you let it go. So, John, it's your turn to suggest the game. Okay. Um, Deathloop. Deathloop at number 20? Deathloop at number 20. I liked Deathloop for what it was. I thought Deathloop was a really fun arcade shooter, as I said. I love how the guns feel in that game. I feel like everything ca- fires like it's a fucking cannon exploding in your hands. I love the feel of the bullets hitting these weird gangly men. It made it felt like time splitters, you know? I think Deathloop's Loop's biggest problem isn't just like... I think it partially it's the marketing because I felt like the marketing portrayed it as this one thing when it was something else. But I also feel like the first four hours of the game portray it as that thing. And it is not that thing. Yeah. Like, I, I, I think Deathloop's a really good game. I think it's a fine game. I think it is one of the most disappointing games of the year as well. Just for what it could have been. And like, it claws its way back to me in other ways. The voice acting is great. The style is great. It's awesome that it's a video game with like, you know, two black protagonists. Like... How often do you get that? You know? Never. Never. But, um, there's a lot you can criticize with it, and I think the game is too easy to break as well. And I never really found myself planning or strategizing past, like, I'm going to set up some turrets outside this room or yeah. stuff like that. You know, I just, for the most part, my gun skills were enough to get me through, and I suck at guns. So, yeah. Yeah. Like, Deathloop was a disappointment for me. I went in after like thinking prey is one of my favorite games arcane's prey and i was really hoping for that level of depth and it just wasn't there the depth fell away like four hours into it i was just like oh okay this i don't really have to think too hard of it and eventually everything will fall into place itself and i don't really have to work to get it there i just have to do it um and that was disappointing to me and a lot of the voice acting is really great, and I then felt the kind of story didn't meet the voice acting. Like, well, it just kind of disappears, yeah. doesn't it? It disappears for like twelve hours, and then it comes back, and it's weird. Yeah, and like there's stuff you can find, like there's audio logs, and there's like cool little things, like like allusions to like Colt having a relationship with one of the visionaries. But then you meet that visionary, and all you can do is kill them but like, like that's the you thing know? as well like i found like you'd meet the visionary you never had like a standoff with them yeah. you never had a conversation you just kill them yeah even a cutscene where it zoomed in on them or something like i accidentally killed the last guy in the party because i was just stealthing my way through it oh, and, man, that sucks. and i was just like and it was just like visionary killed and i was just like where <laughs> why who <laughs> what so like it just kind of the game falls apart in yeah. too many small ways like that for me to want it any further on this list. I thought it was going to be tighter and unraveled very yeah. quickly. Yeah, like there was a lot of like interlocking systems I was expecting that never ended up being there. Mm-hmm. And just the incest stuff, not I don't love it. <laughs> yeah, you know, I will say could have done without so much incest in games this year. Mm-hmm. Don't hit on your daughter or imply that that's a potential route even though he's an amnesiac. Just don't. I'm just saying, mm-hmm. House of Fata Morgana, fantastic game, but, you know, just, you know, maybe just dial back a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Number 19. <laughs> Number 19, and it's for me to say. 
Mm -hmm. Okay. I love Little Nightmares too. Is it any of our top game? Uh, no, it's not. No. That's the thing. But I also think you could say that it, still out of quite a lot of games that are left here. Okay. I like. I really like Little Nightmares too. It made me go back and buy the original Little Nightmares. Um, I thought it was very visually stunning and yeah. just. It it was one of the first things I think that's given me twinges of like, oh, PlayStation Five. Yeah. You know. That opening section in the field with the hunter. Mm -hmm. I like how bleak it felt and realized the world was. Going back to play the first one, it was kind of like an amalgamation of cool ideas. This felt very uh, much more brought together in a way that everything worked succinctly mm -hmm. and I really liked that there was a lot of camera issues that gave me a, a lot of frustration especially when you have to smack dolls, doll babies with a pipe yeah. I, I really didn't like a lot of the ragdoll physics where you would connect an attack but it wouldn't count because just whatever pressure point you hit an enemy or whatever ledge you grabbed onto it didn't count it yeah so it, i would say it's a very fumbly game yes and so sometimes you think you're making a clean jump and you're doing the fun set piece but you end up repeating it and it sucks the momentum yeah. out of it and i found that frustrating i wish it was snappier in those places yeah like more more forgiving in its kind of space I liked how it used the space. It wasn't always just going like left to right. There was a lot of going up and down and hmm. manipulating those environments in such yeah. creative ways. Yeah, I really liked it, and it made me a fan of the series. But I I'm I'm okay with letting it go. Yeah, I I, I I think I like the idea more of it than playing it in some ways. Like I and I I really enjoyed it. I think it's got amazing monsters. Yeah. And like yeah. for a game like this that is about you surviving encounters with these big massive monsters, they need to be amazing. At the same time, it also bugged out on me where like I remember I pretty much walked through an entire section without experiencing the yeah. gimmick. Oh yeah, I didn't load it yeah, in. Yeah, just didn't didn't Wasn't trigger. that the school teacher one as well? No, where it you're in the was rafters? the um the mannequins. Yeah. Oh, that's they, I just like, oh cool, creepy and mannequins. That's really and just scary. and just walked by them all. That's so nuts. And they didn't yeah. and you didn't get chased by a single one. Yeah. Like I could I could see no, not one. Um I could see little nightmares going higher. I, I don't really know that I have the the stock to to fight for it, you know what I mean? There's Same. nothing I would throw in front of it. And I think when that's when that comes up then it's time for it to go. Okay, at number 19, Little Nightmares 2. Neo, it's your cut. Huh? <laughs> um, hmm. Shit. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> um, crap, I don't fucking know anymore. Uh, We're in it. We're, yeah. This is it. This is what game of the year is. Okay, John, we have not spoken about Lost Judgment. How are you feeling about that? I fucking love Lost Judgment. Um, it it I have never seen a sequel so succinctly take all my problems with the first game and just get rid of them. And like it, it's it's more than just like another Yakuza game. It's totally doing its own thing. It's delivering on the premise of you actually being a detective and being a sneaky ass fucking person. And you know, so much of it is you sneaking around a high school, planting hidden cameras, which you know, I, I regret that choice of words. But it's great, and the combat feels so good. The new, like, um, snake style is just some of the most fluid combat I have played in any of the Yakuza games. And just generally, like, beating the shit out of people feels amazing. But, like, you know, there's a great heart to it. There's real camaraderie between um, the main dude. Tack. Yeah, Tack and his bar boyfriend. They're just so much fun to watch. Um, the, the, I feel like there's a level of presentation that's back in this game that was missing in the original Judgment as well as Yakuza 7 I love Judgment um, if it doesn't go here it's probably not going to be that far before it goes so like I don't want to pull out all the stops to fight for it right now I can't wait to play this over the holidays but if you guys feel that maybe there's nothing else that could go before this i guess i could i could let it go i think i'd i think i might throw inscription there ahead of lost judgments whoa mm. okay mm. as much as i like yeah then do it <sighs> <sighs> do it <laughs> 
the trigger. Kick it, kick it off the cliff. Inscription. The first, the first couple of hours of Inscription is some of the best shit I've played this year. Not just in terms of like visuals, not just in terms of like how it sounds, not just how it plays, but everything. Everything is fucking brilliant. You wake up in this hut. This crazy old man is forcing you to play a card game against him. At any point, you can get up from that card game and, like, explore around the hut and find all these fucking weird, amazing things. And it's so atmospheric and dark. And the drawings on the cards, they're so shitty and they're so good. And it just, it it has such a, like, it all has such an amazing feel and tone. But I got trapped in what i really feel like is a design oversight with that game where it did really hamper my enjoyment of it and i've played like 16 hours of this thing and i i I love i love it at its best but also the new phase of the game i am in it's cool i've seen it before and it's like they're kind of going for this maybe not haunted game but like something very sinister about this fake game this this whole meta layer to it it's cool i've seen this shit done better i've seen it done in things like anodyne i've seen it done like really amazingly in something like doki doki literature club like i think it does not do it as good as them and i think for as amazing as i think this game is and i really genuinely think everyone should play this game it's so fucking cool i can let it go now at number 18. At number 18. Okay. John, it's your cush. But may I offer you a game? What do you got? Persona 5 Strikers. <laughs> yeah, gone. You guys let this get way too far, and I'm upset about it. <laughs> it's my sister. I would have let it go further, Brian. <laughs> no, I, I, I think we gotta balance it out. Yeah, fair enough. Persona Five Striker is my sixth favorite game of 2021. Oh, I can't. Like, if, if it helps, I am sick that that beat inscription. <laughs> sure, it helps. I really like this game, John. It, I, 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 I enjoyed it, and in my brain, it converted to happy. Well, I know that's, when that's, you, that's what matters. I know when you played it, it converted to sad. It converted to nothing. <laughs> Nothing, even just, better. Just nothing. Just, wow, I don't feel anything. I wrote some oh, notes. Oh, Persona 5 was really long, wasn't it? That's, what it made, <laughs> that's how it made me feel. So it's shorter. Yeah, it's a, it's half the length. It was like 40 hours for me. Mm-hmm. 40, well, yeah, Persona 5 took me 100 hours back in 2017. Same. Okay, Persona 5 Strikers. I wrote some notes about it. Brian, just, just take it from the heart. No, I can't. I already wrote this from the heart, and then I, I don't want to mumble my words and jumble them. It was great to hang out with the Phantom Thieves again. <laughs> this is what they get out of it, John. I like They're it. not even that good a cast. I thought the new story was a lot of fun. I love the road trip across Japan setup from sunny Okinawa in the South Islands to <laughs> freezing Sapporo up north. There's some great variety. This has been done in the Akaza series, but it was great to see it all in one game. It's still very simple in terms of what's modeled in the design and environmental layouts but i thought there was some clever cheats and someone who works in animation i like when someone works smart same i appreciated the kind of corners they cut but it didn't compromise the style yeah it's awesome when games cut corners you know when they work smart to make a high quality game without over crunching or pushing their staff too that far. is true but now back to persona 5 <laughs> Uh, I'll, I'll stop, I'll stop. <laughs> it uses the Omega Forest development team. Uh, they use the, the Muso game engine in a super interesting way that I haven't seen before. Uh, it has this time-stopping, fast-paced JRPG feel to it. And I, t- I thought it carried the Persona license forward really well. Uh, it feels like a continuation of the previous game, Persona 5, despite being made from a different studio, which is a very difficult thing to achieve. When you think of something like Star Fox Adventures, and that's a weird example, but that is a Star Fox game continued by Rare, and it completely falls flat. That was just an example I could think of off the top of my head. But there's been dozens of examples of like a sequel to a game made by a different studio, and they just completely miss the mark. Even if it's in a different genre of gameplay, I still think it feels like Persona 5. And I respect that about it. Yeah. But yeah, at number 17, Persona 5 Strikers. And John, that one really hurt. Good. <laughs> Good. 
was so salty. Perso- I, I thought that was good. Like, I genuinely came into this thinking Persona 5 Strikers was going to be like mid 40s. Really? Yeah, genuinely. No, I, I'm no, I so it. shocked it made it this far. Brian kept saying, I really like Persona 5 Strikers. <laughs> what made you think it was going to go out? I, I see, I don't think, uh, maybe I just wasn't listening, but I never heard that passionate, uh, like, argument for it before today. I played the fuck out of that game. Yeah. I nearly platinumed it. I might, I might actually go back and platinum it. But Brian, you play the fuck it. Like, that's how you play games, very intensely. Oh, yeah. This is one of my very intense games. Like, you played year. Hyrule Warriors more. Oh, yeah. Well, that's one of, like, one of my favorite games from 2021, but it, I, it, we already put that in, 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 in a number in 2020. Okay. Is it my go? Whose go is it? It's Nia's go. Oh, fuck. No, wait, no. It's my cut. Okay. Because I, I offered that upon yeah. John. Mm-hmm. My cut. At some point, John, we're going to have to talk about the Grace Atter- Ace Attorney Chronicles. I feel like I have cut a lot. No, no, no. <laughs> we don't have to cut it now, but we do have to have a talk about it at some point. Well, we have to have a talk about everything on this list at some point. Exactly. So I'm just... How are you feeling about the Grace Ace Attorney Chronicles? Brilliant. One of the best games i played this year. Okay. John, how are you feeling about Last Judgment? How am I feeling about Boomerang X? Oh, I love Boomerang X. <laughs> Boomerang X is very good. Oh, it's such a cool game. I can let Last Judgment go. Ahead of really? Disco Elysium, the final cut. Oh, absolutely. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. I'm just making... I, I'm just trying to get a, a mental map now of... Now, I'm just saying, Neve, there is a lot of Neve games on this okay, list. Okay, yeah, look, look, I no, hear I, you. No, I'll, I hear I'll, let, I'll let Last Judgment go as a show of good faith. Okay. But I am saying... <laughs> I hear we you. Got, there's a lot of Neve on this list, and <laughs> I, I know you. And I know. You, for, I know. <laughs> you hang back, and then you're just... You, do, you don't offer your own games. I get it. And you know what, Neve? I, I don't more than get it. I respect it. It's a good but tactic. I just want to point out that that is happening, and that happens every year. I don't know. And then, I'm not sure. and then your fucking girlfriend messages me and is like, "John, you were so mean." That I was like, "No, I wasn't." I, I, she is her own woman and can do what she wants. Don't you dare, this year, Rebecca. Don't you dare. <laughs> so, are we cutting Lost Judgment? Lost Judgment to number sixteen. Look, look here's yeah. what I say about Lost Judgment: is its own thing. Like, it's its own thing. It is, in a way, another Yakuza game. Like, there isn't that... There's a lot of stuff about this that's really interesting and works in new ways for a Yakuza game. I can't really make the argument that it's really innovating or pushing the envelope in any serious new way. I can just say that when I play it, it is like my brain is being drenched in some kind of wonderful syrup. And I just melt into it, and hours go away, and I love Tak, and I love his bar of boyfriends, and I just think they're, they're just a great group of lads... And I am helping those kids in that high school reach their full potential. That's at number 16. Okay. Okay, we're into the top 15 now. And Neve, it's your turn. Okay. I will cut Sable. Okay. Okay. Sable um, at number 15. Yeah. The art direction of Sable is why you play Sable. It is absolutely beautiful. It is a cell shaded illustrative style with a day night cycle that changes how it approaches the artwork. Like the colors disappear and it becomes line work in the distance when it gets to evening time with a really nice purple hue. There is nothing that looks like Sable. The time lapses in Sable are the coolest fucking They're thing. Insane. Like you cannot like mistake a screenshot for this game for literally anything else and i think that's what's interesting about it when you think sci-fi video game you have a picture in your head of what that could look like sable is a sci-fi video game that is so its own thing it has organic terrain with tall orange rock formations giant ancient bones of dinosaurs but also intermingled with downed like starships and like ancient technologies it is like what if like jakku and Oh god, um, Tatooine didn't suck ass. Like, what if they were like, what if it was lovely to live on a desert planet and instead of like, like cripplingly like, barren wasteland, barren, it was like a cooperative nice place? And like, Sable has no. Yeah, it no, could just be this Zen sand yeah. garden. So, like, Z- is, Sable has no like fail state, has no combat. Like, it is kind of like Breath in the Wild in the sense that it is environmental pu- puzzles that you do through a like stamina gauge. You climb things and you float down in your bubble, which acts like your glider. Mm. And it is very self directed. You are kind of set off in the world as Sable to kind of discover it at your own pace. And it is just like, it is a chill time in a beautiful place. It kind of does like, because it is so self-directed and there, there isn't much to do, 
your mileage may vary, but you can end that game whenever you want. Your goal is to go out there and find some masks. You find one mask, you can go back home. You can find them all. You can spend all your time looking around. So is there a way to like hit credits in it? Yeah, you can You can end it when you get the mask kind of thing and you go home and you, that's kind of it. I haven't been there because I just like, I like riding my bike along the dunes. And if you like mech design and industrial design the kind of other thing you can do is raise money and buy parts for your cool hover bike um yeah a cozy game that i really liked with an aesthetic that is so its own and a soundtrack that just complements that aesthetic uh masterfully not in quite like sable cool john it's your turn you've got to ask you a tough question here oh god okay if it was between Bravely Default 2, and I'm not saying this is definitely it, but between Bravely Default 2 and Shin Megami Tensei 5, which RPG are you going with? Bravely. Okay. I think I can cut Shin Megami Tensei 5 in that case. At number 14. Unless you guys had any other suggestions. I could also go, I, I could also go for unpacking. Uh, uh, oh, it's hurting. Uh, Listen to that. That's why we do this. Those noises <laughs> are why we do this. So, like, I've just started Shin Megami Tensei, and this is my first game, like, my first Shin, Shin Megami Tensei game, and I didn't really know what these games are about. I like this a lot. It's cool. I really like this. I was like, oh, it's, like, goth Pokemon yeah. with, like, a little twink. <laughs> like, yep. Like, <laughs> what a yeah. What a beautiful, androgynous little creature. Yeah, with, like, a real, like, oppressive, depressed oh, tone yeah, to it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, there is a kind of nearly sci-fi silent hill yeah. thing going on the the music design of it is like oh, so good do you know my favorite feature of this you, you go into a battle and like the drums kind of kick in a little bit but the music only starts when you land your first attack and it feels mm-hmm. just put that in every turn based game forever till the end of time it's like I'm really oh I'm really liking it I don't know <laughs> see the thing is though Neve, like, like I, I think I'm like 8 or 9 hours in and you're I'm around 10. 10, okay. I guess that is enough. It, like, I know what this is, but the thing is, will I get bored with 50 hours of this? And then I look at a game like Bravely that is similar, where it's very combat driven, and I never get bored of Bravely Default. So I'm hoping that I will just want to okay. eat this Let game. Let me look. I'm not doing this as an aggressive move, so I'm just taking a temperature here. Okay. How, legitimately, how strongly are you guys feeling about Boomerang X? Honestly, very strong. Like, for me, this is, like, first-person shooter um, Hollow Knight. Yeah. I'd like to see that, like, in our top 10 at the, 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 the you know, at 10. Okay, Brian, let me ask you a question. Okay. How strongly are you feeling about Tori? I'd be fine with Tori in between the 15 mark and the 10 mark. Ratchet and Clank? No. No, John. And you thought Persona 5 Strikers was bad? Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart? That's the real fucker. Okay. I think unpacking is fucking cool. I really I've heard like, nothing bad about this I game. I really like unpacking. Is there the passion among the three of us for it to last with everything else? And I say that as someone who thinks unpacking is great. And I say it as someone who's not played it and is just excited about it. You'll like it, Brian. I, yeah, you'll love, you'll I love can't it. wait yeah. to play unpacking. I don't know. Unpacking is this thing I always talk about where it's environment as a character and props as a character. They have managed to tell an entire story without a, like without dialogue and without like a character showing up once. Like They just tell a story of someone's life through objects. And like, as someone who loves objects and does environments as their job, that really speaks to me. That it's just a showcase of the power of environmental design. Okay, I feel like that brings us back to Shin Megami Tensei, a <laughs> game I really like. Okay, Neve, have you beaten the first boss in Shin Megami Tensei? Yes. Um, have you fought the the Oni dude? Yeah. Yeah. He kicked my ass and I was so upset about mm-hmm. it. <sighs> I, I don't know. Oof. Throw, throw something else out there. Like Let's, Shit, let's the... see what feels... Which way? Oh, God, I don't want to try anything there. We no. have to, we have to uh, know. Okay. And if I disagree with it, I'll disagree with it. But like, okay. let's just see how it feels. John, I want to hear you disagree with the Grace Ace Attorney Chronicles. The Grace Ace Attorney, to me, is... It is... It's like... 
I would say better than those original Phoenix Wright games. I think wow. those Phoenix Wright games have individual cases that surpass the cases in Grey Ace Attorney, but the level of presentation, the level of writing, the characters, the way it brings Victorian England to life in this real, like, critical way. Like, it does criticize it. Like, it does actually take shots at it in a way I really love. It's not all twee. No, it's not. But the level of presentation that goes into this game, it's not just that it looks nice. It's how it makes those characters' emotions, like, fucking real. And they have to feel real because when you are breaking those fuckers, when you have them in the witness box and you are peeling back every little lie, you need to feel it on their expressions. And it nails that, you know, like those moments are so dramatic and so great. It is a kind of storytelling that literally no other game has gotten this right. Like genuinely that level of emotion is so strong and so powerful. And I, 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 this is one of those games I need to see it. I feel like if not in our top 10, closer than this. Like I can't let it go yet. Then I think it's got to be Shin Megami Tensei 5 at yeah. number 14, which is a great place. It's yeah. a great, and like this is such a strong list. Like that's what I'm yeah. realizing now. This is such a big deal. If me and Neve had played more Shin Megami yeah, Tensei, it maybe go it higher. goes further, you know? But I, there's nothing else on this list I can really see going right now. And I, I am going to play more of this. Like, it is fucking awesome. Oh, yeah. This is my Christmas game. I'm so excited. When you got into the demons and the merging, I was just like... <gasps> oh, and then you transfer their traits. I was and... like, oh, maybe I could make a sick kind of debuff team where I put all my stats into luck. <sighs> That's the most fucked up thing I've ever heard. <laughs> yeah. Will this fuck me later on? I yeah. don't know. <laughs> Time to see. find out. <laughs> Time to get fucked from the future. What does Mirage do? I guess I'll find out. Brian, oh my god. This is one of the most solid final sections we've ever had. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's my turn. And at number 13, I'm putting down Tory 3D and Tory 2. Oh my god. I, I, was, I, I, was, I love this little bird. I was so sure that was going to be like near top 5. I know. This list is too good for that, yeah. though. Tory Treaty. I'm just going to refer to it as Tory Treaty uh, Duology. Uh, this is my fifth favorite game <laughs> of 2021. <laughs> this is the low poly treaty game I wanted. It has that Saturn Japanese arcade aesthetic vibe absolutely nailed. Music is super cute. It has some really fun Sonic or style melodies. Plays a bit twitchy, but once you get the hang of the controls, it's very fun. A fast little bird. These games are less than a euro each. Take less than an hour to beat. They are sweet, cheap, and short. I played Tory Treaty. Did you? Yeah. Did you like it? Yeah. I found the like the platforming a little more difficult. Yeah, it's very twitchy and yeah. slippery. I think it? I think it feels it's good though. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I like how it controls. Once like, I got into it, what a beautiful aesthetic mm-hmm. as well. Yeah, like Brian, you called it a, a Sega Saturn game. It's that. It feels it looks, like Sonic Jam and yeah, Sonic it's, Gore. It's absolutely that era. And those those, those remix levels are fucking hard. Mm. When you get into like like the kind of glitch and there's that man there, what do you do? I don't. You just say hi to him and you move okay, on. Okay, because I was just like, do I to try and jump on him? I do, like, it... Because it seems like Tori can't hurt anyone. Yeah. He just avoids stuff. Like, you're, yeah. you're, they're, they're all obstacles and you have to make sure you get all the stars. But every time that man happens, I'm always like... Yeah, <gasps> yeah it, I thought it was very mean that he took his ice cream. Yeah. It's just, this game ain't hurting nobody. But we hurt it by putting it at number 13. We're the evil people, not Tori. Tori's a cute little bird. He's got sunglasses. Yeah. Little shoes. Very he's very cute. He's a cool guy. He runs very fast. If we had cutest video game character category this year, Tori would absolutely win. Oh, yeah. dominate it. Oh, yeah. What are the other playable characters like? There's a bat. He's all right. There's something. I think the other thing is like a... Bowl like, of noodles or something, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's like a ramen bowl. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Okay. Neve, it's your turn. And we got to pick number 12. Uh, okay um i get it's gonna have to be unpacking i agree i can't like i can't put it against i I think i think there's too much raw love for everything else here and it's a shame because unpacking is fucking great and i kind of would have liked to see it in the top 10 yeah but like what what else do you cut I don't know. And like, what a surprise unpacking was. That wasn't like, you know, that just came out of nowhere. I download it. 
played it and I was just like, this is like beautiful. The, yeah. the sprite work in this is gorgeous. And just the fun of unpacking without the bullshit of moving. It was great. It's like, it reminds me of those times like when I used to play Oblivion and I used to just arrange a table of items and it, like there's something so fun of, uh, about that. And, it's very satisfying. Yeah, yeah. And like, here's a game that speaks to the fun of organizing something well. There used to be this really weird old Microsoft program, which would just give you like a bunch of JPEGs and PNGs where you could just like put like a sitting room and then drop like a PNG of a cup onto the table. Oh, and I'd spent yeah. so long doing that. And that is this game. Yeah. And it was great. It's a fantastic little game and a beautiful little story. Mm hmm. And now we're into number 11. Oh, and John, no. it's your turn. Number 11 is the cruelest number. Yeah. Because it's like, you were nearly in the top 10, but you're not. You nearly made it, but you didn't. And you're at number 11, where you belong. And John, it's on you. This is impossible. This is... Okay, can I just read this list, the list that I have to choose from? Yeah. Okay, so we have 11 games here. 11... Boomerang X, Bravely Default 2, Disco Elysium The Final Cut, Guilty Gear Strive, Halo Infinite, Metroid Dread, No More Heroes 3, Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart, Resident Evil Village, The Forgotten City, The Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. That's so strong. A bunch of games we have a lot of emotional investment Thank in. You. Man, last year was shit, wasn't it? <laughs> like, we looked at our list from last year and we were like, ah, what were we doing? Come on. We're just having a good Christmas. Mm -hmm. This year, though, shit Christmas. Shit. <laughs> okay. Shit time. I feel like maybe the odd one out here is Bravely Default 2. You're so wrong. But I only say that, Neve, because I have heard you say negative things about Bravely Default 2. <sighs> I have heard you say, like, talk about things that you are not happy with it. Well, and... It's just me, Brian John. You know what I'm like. I, I, I... <laughs> <laughs> I'm terrible. But Bravely Default is the best turn-based combat of the year. It is some of the best turn-based combat you will get in general it is so deep you have the bravely system which is just like it's super intricate where you get to bank moves where you can like store up to four turns and just go wild but on top of that you have the asterisk class system and there's 23 different classes you can wear two classes at the one time on top of that you have an ability that you unlock from each class that you can use regardless of what class you're with. So you can put on MP savers that you get from the tamer thing for your mage build. On top of that, you have a carry limit for your your armor and your weapons that is specific to the <laughs> class you're using. It is super deep. It is layered JRPG turn-based combat. This is for the connoisseur of turn-based combat. This is what you want. And it does all of it with a very sweet and gentle story that can often be dark, but maybe doesn't push at the heights of JRPG storytelling. You know, it's serviceable and it gets you there, but the combat and the classes and the costume design is where that game shines. <sighs> The localization is brilliant. There's an Irish town and they say stuff like, Asher, you'll be grand and thanks a million. Do you like it better than Ratchet and Clank a Rift Apart? Yes, I do. <laughs> I do indeed. Brian, you're the one who seems to love Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. I like Ratchet and Clank too, but if I had to pick, it would be Bravely. Holy shit. And Brian, like, I know, I know you love that little fucking pink nose thing. <laughs> <laughs> her name is rivet <laughs> but at some point i think we have to come to terms with how fucking monstrous this top 10 is and like i will say like out of everything left ratchet and clank is the only game on here that i actively dislike for whatever that counts for everything else i think is great you know like i played the demo of bravely default 2 that's a fucking cool game in so many ways you know i would go to bat for it over this there's other stuff like, I don't know where we were ready to talk about Forgotten City, but I would be heartbroken to lose Forgotten City at this point. I think that game deserves okay. to be in the top 10. John, it's your turn and you get number 11. I will give you Ratchet and Clank, Rift Apart, 
but it's my turn next and I get to say a game. Ratchet and Plank. To me... Wait, make him agree to it first. Jesus, Brian. I can't. There's nothing I can do. Like, he can <laughs> gonna say, I can try and disagree with his game. But I'm gonna cry at him. It, I mean, there's games, there's absolutely games on this. And like, don't say what, the game, what game you're thinking, but there are absolutely games on this list that I would not be satisfied at number 10. There's some that are, and some that there are not. Oh, yeah? Yep. <laughs> do you want to offer anything out for number 11? I will offer you Ratchet and Plank Rift Apart at number 11. But no, do you want to offer any, like, give, pitch, work with me here. Like, if you don't want me to okay. take out Ratchet and Plank now, what do you want me to take out? There's games that John has played on this list that I haven't played, and I don't know if I would play them. Or maybe I would someday, but I might Which not. Which one are you talking about? you talking about Disco Elysium? Yes, Disco Elysium, The Final Cut. I, no, no. We fucked up. We fucked up in 2019. We didn't play the game of the year 2019. We didn't play the game of the year 2020 for all I know. Disco Elysium is that good. It is that important. I think it's a game that people are going to talk about for decades. Like boring people. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just, there's so many games I would cut before Disco Elysium. So many of my games I would cut before Disco Elysium. Oh, yeah? Yep. What okay. about the Grace Ace, Ace, Great Ace Attorney Chronicles? Number 11. I think Grace Ace Attorney, Grace, the Great Ace Attorney should go further than Ratchet and Clank. I gotta say, I was playing the Great Ace Attorney and I got stonewalled so early um, on that it made me so frustrated that I put it down and never picked it up again. It was one of those things where I knew the answer. Sounds like more a you problem than the game if Maybe this is, seems to be a, just an Ace Attorney thing in general. It's like I knew the no, answer. No, that, that has happened to me once or twice as but well. But I didn't know the thing they wanted from me before that. And mm. I kept answering the wrong thing and just ending the game consistently. And I just got so pissed off that I turned it off. That is frustrating, for sure. But it was also very lovely textures and very nice models. I don't know. Okay, between you guys. look, with Ratchet and Clank, here's how I feel about it. Ratchet and Clank is a pretty good thing of something that already exists. Yeah. Yeah. And, like, if I'm being real, the couple of hours I spent with Ratchet and Clank is literally the most understimulated I have been playing a game this year. I got nothing from this game. It is beautiful looking like it is stunning i feel like it's because for me i got loads out of it it's it, like it is beautiful but i feel like it's just a beautiful it's just a nicer version of something that already existed you know and like there is a lot of nice art direction and stuff none of it really spoke to me like for me it was like oh yeah it looks like all those 3d movies and it's cool that you can control it but just there wasn't there wasn't anything in this game that I thought thought was really like. I feel like you look at everything else on this list, and even like unpacking and Tori and Shin Megami Tensei. There's fucking soul to those games. People tore out little bits of what they are and made video games out of them. I don't think you can say that about Ratchet and Clank. I think I think you could. I really liked it, and I had an emotional response to <laughs> Ratchet and Clank ripped apart. I'm inclined to agree more with John on this one because, like, I. I <laughs> I really liked Ratchet and Clank, but I also found the story a little lacking in emotional, like, weight. Brian, I am here. I am open to your counter argument, but you've got to make it and it's got to be strong. I'm fine with it being at number 11 and it's your turn. That's more a threat than a counter (laughs) argument. But it's my turn next and I'm going to suggest a game that I don't really have an investment in. Okay. You can do that. But are you? But like right now, are you okay with this going? No, but I am, and that's the problem. Ratchet I'm... and Clank, rift apart. At number, number 11. eleven. Oh, it always hurts the most. Oh, it's the worst. I don't number forget this. <laughs> it was my number three game of the year. <laughs> <laughs> it's really interesting because there's a game on this. That all of us have played, and we haven't spoken about it yet. But guess what? It's not in my top six. And I really like this game. I think I know what you're talking about. I think That's I know what you're talking about. such a fucking yeah. twist. Holy I, shit. I know. Mm. Okay, I thought I knew. 
You okay. thought you knew me? I'm a fucking freak. I don't think I said that. <laughs> I don't think I said this at the top, but I know that the artwork is Us and Lady D this year. That was commissioned long before we ever recorded this episode. We don't know what's going to win. Mm-hmm. We don't, do we? <laughs> I, I really don't know. I don't, yeah. But you know what's not going to win is Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. At number 11, but in my heart, number 3. <laughs> My favorite big budget cinematic set piece game of 2021. That's so specific, Brian. I know, but you know how every year <laughs> they do those big budget cinematic games? Yeah. You know, the flagship console exclusive. Sure. I found it to be very well optimized. It runs great on the system and it's fully accessible. I thought the characters were great. The world designs, fantastic. The weapon varieties were a lot of fun. I ended up mastering every weapon and I found a perk to each one. They do all do the same thing. They do not. Some of my favorites are the Black Hole Vortex, (laughs) the Toxiary Sprinkler. I love the Toxiary Sprinkler. And I really enjoyed the Buzz Blades just because it tore up all these enemies into ribbons. Mm. Just the fact that that was all individually modeled. I love doing the um, the guns that would give you the little dog robots. Yes. And then the other gun that gives you the octopus buddies. So you can just have a whole like army of little guys. Absolutely. Like for me, I love sci-fi when the sci-fi weapons change the properties of your opponent. Give them a new coat of paint. Not impressed with a boring laser beam. Mm-hmm. It's got to be something wild and wacky because this is sci-fi we're talking about. I ended up platinum this game because I was so into it. I thought the new characters were great. Rivet is super cool and her partner Kit was really, really cute. While I'm not invested in the series as a whole, I've played a few of the Ratchet and Clank games before. Missed out on more than I have played. I thought this did a great job of reintroducing all the elements and taking it from there. I agree. But it's at number 11. The most tragic number. I am dead inside. (laughs) I hate video games. I hate Neve. I hate John. And I hate you, dear listener. You see, Neve, I just did as would be expected of you. You betrayed him. <laughs> oh, we haven't even gotten to the betrayals. Oh. If you were listening to this and you have a smile on your face, good. How dare you? Because fuck you. Mom. So, Brian, what are you thinking? Are we thinking Halo Infinite? How are we, how are we feeling there, buddy? <laughs> Think of for number 10, either uh, Disco Elysium or the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. I can lose Great Ace Attorney. Oh my god. There it is, our 10th in the top 10, yeah. the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. You know, I, I, I love Great Ace Attorney a lot. This was one of those games where I picked it up on a whim and just got so sucked into it and just thought it was so magical and fun and silly and just such a special game. And like... The writing, the music, the aesthetic, it's all perfect. I think what Neve said is absolutely valid in that, like, there are cases where, like, it can stonewall you, especially, like, sometimes if you figure out something ahead of time and are trying to prove that. I ran into that way less than I have in other Ace Attorney games, but that it's still a problem, right? So I understand. Um, I don't think the cases were, in general, all, like, very consistently strong. I thought there was some weak cases in there. But if that was different, if the cases were actually just better cases individually, I think this could go even higher. And that's also why I'm so excited to play like the second game in this series. And that's the the other thing why I think this game is so deserving to be number 10. Like this is, I've played half of this game and it's one of my favorite games of the year. Like there's an entire other half to go and I can't wait. Like, as in, I've played the first one all the way through, and now it's time for the second Great Ace Attorney game. And I am really happy this made the top 10. This game was such a lovely surprise this year. And if anyone just really wants a really heartfelt, cozy, beautifully done game, I really don't think you can go wrong with this one. That's uh, the Great Ace Attorney, number 10. Okay. How are you feeling, Neve? Neve, Neve, it's your turn. I don't know. What to... I don't know. <laughs> Um, do you think this is the most fucked up top 10 we've ever had? Yeah, yeah, I think it is. I didn't think we could do it, but we we did it. We fucked ourselves up so bad. I don't know what to pick, because, like... I, All like, of a sudden, I give a shit. Yeah. That's what happens every year. We're all, we always go into this being like, well, you know, I don't mind too much. But then, like, <laughs> just, like, five hours of podcasting, and you're tired, and mm. you're hurt, and you've had to make difficult decisions. How are you feeling about Disco Elysium, John? 
Um, look, I'm the only one who played that on this podcast, and like, I think it's done well. I think personally, like, I would definitely, as a podcast, I think we should put it over Boomerang X and Bravely Default. Because like, I have yet, Why? I have yet, uh, John Boomerang X is pretty cool. I've, okay, give, me the, X is give cool. me the argument for Boomerang X. It's just. The core gameplay of that is just so tight. It's such a refined, simple game. It doesn't need to go bigger than it needs mm-hmm. to be because of how simple and to the point it is. Every mission you enter, it gives you something. So you start on the ground with a boomerang. And when you throw that boomerang, like a boomerang, you have to wait for it to come back. And my first thought was, love if I could recall this. Next level you get to, you get the recall for your boomerang. And you keep going on. Next mission you get, you can call yourself to the boomerang while it's in air. So, so I've, you I've, are off the ground. It's something like Portal then. It's, it, it feels like... It feels like you're playing a first person shooter game. I guess like I like I played through played all this. Like I got up to where you get the kind of the shotgun blast thing, mm-hmm. you know, when yeah. you kill two enemies. And like it was cool. None of it really clicked with me. How, did you get to the Coliseum bit? Maybe they all felt like kind of arenas. Well this this was a full big you're flying around it and there's like kind of squids floating towards you. No, I don't think I got to that bit. It's like once you are not on the floor anymore because that's kind of where it gets you you start on the ground and eventually you are flying and you don't need to touch the floor i got to the bit where there's two big dudes up on a bridge and you have to yeah, kill them yeah is that the bit yeah once you get like I, I from hated there that bit. afterwards it is all flying yeah i don't know that that would do it for me but like if you guys want to push it further sure i guess like with Bravely Default 2, I think that, like, okay, it's a really awesome version of something that already exists. I feel like Disco Elysium is just this whole different fucking thing I've never really seen before. And, like, a level of writing I've never seen in games before. Like, there were characters in this that I couldn't wait to talk to because they were just so real and, like, well-realized. Like, Kim Kutsuragi, you're... you're your like deputy in this he's like character of the year material he's fucking amazing and he's there with you the whole way through and there's so many characters like this and like some characters are really scary and horrible and you don't want to talk to them some of them are just super endearing some of them are incredibly sad and like this is this game and like it's this game it's really sad it's also fucking hilarious and like in sometimes at the same time you know like it is the best depiction of a broken person I think I've ever seen in a game. Like, it's just... Maybe, like, outside, like, an Arthur Morgan kind of thing, you know? Mm-hmm. But, like, it's that level. And the way it implements that, the way it tells, like, its story through its game mechanics, I just think is better than a really good turn-based RPG. It's not just a really good turn-based RPG. It is, like, a just a deep one. No single person will ever play this game the same. No single person will ever have the same party or the same way through this game. And it's like, that's what's interesting to me is being able to mix all of these things together and just create the most fucked up bills or the weirdest way to get through it. There's a class that is like a painter that is just like debuffs. You can you can get through this game as a little painter, you know? Like, there's like, it tickles your brain when it comes to building a party i get that and i like that but like you say that but like with disco elysium you can play like an authoritarian fascist you can play I don't like play as a fascist john okay i don't want to play as a fucking painter neve why would i do that um you can play as like just this really broken sad person you can play as just this embodiment of chaos like and like when you do that like there you know there's literally a build where you dance your way through a lot of situations you know there's it's, a build where you sing your way through um <laughs> situations and bravely but this is done in story with story results and story context all and the it's asterisks amazing. are story based you have to beat the boss to oh, get fuck their off, asterisks Niamh. that's not that, that is, is not story it based it is story based that is they not all, story based all the characters story thing ba- revolves around their asterisks no Niamh, that is not what that it means is. it's like you unlock something you like the boss is a thief and you become a thief by beating him that yeah. is not the same as like literally figuring out this really weird fucking thing like role playing this very specific way and characters reacting to you role playing that way like uh, if you want to tell me that like 
you can role play a thief and take actions no, in you the can't. story. It's not a role That's playing game. It about. just like its depth is different. Your depth is in the role playing. But like, my I'm not depth dis- is I'm in not the disagreeing mechanics. Disagreeing that there's depth in the mechanics. I'm just saying in terms of like the narrative argument you made there, I can't accept that. Okay, that's fine. Look, I'll give you the Forgotten City instead. Let's get that out. Fuck. Fuck. She's got a point. I mean, I can give up the Forgotten City over Disco Elysium, but to me, Forgotten City going out over Boomerang Extra Bravely Default is madness. That's what it's all about. How do you feel about Boomerang Extra I think it's great. Yeah, I think it's great too. I think it's just a super neat game that's not doing... <laughs> I keep going, it's not doing nothing to nobody, but you know, it, it is actually doing stuff. It's I think it's very... Uh, sophisticated in its simplicity. Okay, Neve, let me ask you this. I have two games on this list left that I would kill for. Mm-hmm. Disco Elysium and No More Heroes. Mm-hmm. Can you say that if you had... John, t- would you kill for Guilty Gear Strive? Um, I have problems with Guilty Gear Strive. Shit, maybe we should talk about Guilty yeah, Gear Strive. Yeah, maybe Guilty Gear should go. Good idea, John. Um, But, like... Well, now, you, that, like, now that you brought it up, like... We can talk about Guilty Gear Strive. Yeah, we can... I think the facts... There are things about Guilty Gear Strive I have a real problem with. I think it's cool. Like, I th- a fair play to them for basically send, shipping out, like, an anime box set with this game. Yeah. I haven't watched it. I don't really want to, because that's just not how I enjoy experiencing story modes in fighting games. I think Guilty Gear Strive plays phenomenally it's such a fun game to play and like i enjoy it so much and like the music and like the art and everything like visually it's incredible it still stings that they didn't do instant kills you know i feel like there's just there is a part of guilty gear that is missing from me with there so like i think guilty gear strive is absolutely one of my favorite fighting game experiences as a total package i do kind of feel like it's missing some stuff like how do you feel brian I do too. Like I do like that the roster is small in relation to other fighting game contemporaries like Street Fighter V and Smash Ultimate where you're overwhelmed with the roster. I did find that with Guilty Gear Strive, every character on that roster is there for a reason and does mm. a unique thing. Yeah. And the new characters they've added in the season pass, I've all really enjoyed. Yeah, they're great. It is my fourth favorite game of the year. <laughs> Neve, as I'm going to reiterate, I have two games on this list I would kill for. Are You have Boomerang X, Bravely Default 2, Halo Infinite, and Resident Evil Village. I'm guessing you would kill for all those games. Maybe. And at some point... Who knows? We got to, net, you're reverting to chaos, <laughs> Neve. Yeah. It's my favorite part. <laughs> um, Look, if you want to take forgotten city out right now then i guess we have to i like galerius a lot it's a very clever game very good mechanics but... neve you have so many games left on and you yeah, Brian, and she's like, doing it again forgotten city was my game i, I love forgotten city as well yeah I know, you played like... it this morning i was the one who brought this game to you yep and it's great yeah and it's much better sad than to boomerang see it go out at nine <laughs> boomerang, is, boomerang is pretty good Neve, I think you need to cut Boomerang X or Bravely Default 2. I don't think we can get past that. <laughs> then we can cut Forgotten City. I don't, like... I think we should cut Forgotten City. Yeah. I think like, it'd be kind of funny. Like, I, I prefer Boomerang X and Bravely Default to Forgotten City. No. <laughs> not doing it. Not doing it. I will not stand for this. John, how about Guilty Gear Strive? Uh, Brian... Okay. Drop the chaos for a John, moment. John, don't, don't get drunk on Neve's insanity. John, how about Halo Infinite? Halo Infinite. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> John. Let's sit on that one. <laughs> John. Resident Evil Village. <laughs> I'm okay with that. Yeah. Oh, no, no. Neve, come on. You, you gotta see that, like... You have the most <laughs> games left on this list. I know it hurts. <laughs> and I know you hate me a little bit right now, and that is spurring you somewhat. Oh, come Look, on, dude. Okay, I'd have to give up. Like, if I'm going to be serious about this, it's going to have to be Guilty Gear Strive. <laughs> <laughs> now, Brian, she does love Guilty Gear Strive. <laughs> I think we should put Guilty Gear Strive in number nine. No. Because the game could be better. It could be better. It could be better, but no. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Fine. Look, I'll let go of Boomerang X. I won't. <laughs> Shit, I can't Shit. do it. Yeah, I know we're in trouble. John, how do you feel about No More Heroes 3? 
<laughs> no. <laughs> no, guys, it's got a three in the title. <laughs> it's coming third at least. <laughs> then I think it's got to be Disco Elysium, the final cut. No. <laughs> How about... <laughs> We've ha- said every game! <laughs> How, I just want to test the waters in Halo Infinite. <laughs> Give it a while. <laughs> um, I don't know. Like, Boomerang X. Fine. Boomerang X. Brian, unless you really want to go to bat for Boomerang X here. Nah, I'm good. Boomerang X. <laughs> I'm so glad it's in our top ten. Yeah, me yeah. too. It's fucking great. It's, it's so stylish. Like, every area you go into, the colors change. The, like... It's just cool. It's a cool game. It's tight. Yeah, it's super tight. It's sick with a cue at the end. When that big deer boss walks in with the big, like... Oh, dear. Like, yeah. I was like, what the fuck is that? Why is this so big? And it makes a big fucking cloud that eats mm. up half the horizontal space. You're like, well, I guess I'm down in this half of the yeah. dome. You're like, I guess I have to try and stay under this and, like, control. Oh, your my God. Boomerang X is just a very tight game. I really game like the ones. hand animations as well. Yeah. They're, like, not human hands. They move, like... You know how you see like when a chicken moves <laughs> or like a guinea pig and they move and you're like, you're missing your in-betweens. Like what's going on there, buddy? Like they are moving like pose to pose, but the mm-hmm. hands are the same thing with the finger like expressions. It just, oh, I love that personality about mm-hmm. it. And on the hands are wrapped up with bandages. So you kind of feel like a ninja mummy. Yeah. You're like, what the fuck happened there? And the only other character you meet in the world is a giant millipede that talks to you. And Nice guy. Yeah. And you just are going lower and lower into a bug cave where you see like the frozen like in stone aftermath of a bug civilization yeah they're all just on their knees praying but they're just frozen in time Mm -hmm. dead it's like like, (laughs) there's so much in it but it's still so simple yeah cool game Mm -hmm. really like boomerang x at number nine at number nine okay did i offer ratchet and clank a number 11. Is I don't this? think that matters anymore, Brian. Am, am I not? Uh, uh, that was my pick, so it's you now, Brian. Okay, so... I, I, pick- I picked Boomerang X. Okay, yeah, I did. Yeah, okay, yeah. I'm, I'm just counting it back from uh, the third game. Okay, so... My turn, number eight. <sighs> I'm either going to pick The Forgotten City or Guilty Gear Strive. Um, I would be okay with either of them, honestly. Because I think we collectively appreciate those games but we're at the end of our emotional t- tethers well, like, for them i i can okay the way i would the way i would level that out is like i think the forgotten city is kind of weirdly perfect for what it is i think guilty gear strive is an amazing but imperfect version of what it is like i don't like that there's not personalized win quotes the way the same way there used to be mm-hmm. i don't like that it takes two and a half fucking minutes to get into the game like, like they patched that but you spent so much of this year waiting that long i don't like that there's not instant kills i don't like that there's no like real endings in arcade mode or anything like that like there's so much stuff about rev that was cool that they dropped it and granted it's all outside the fighting the fighting of guilty gear strive is fucking phenomenal i love it i understand why high-end players aren't as into it as all guilty gears but i just think it's great i think the music like i think as like a visual audio package, it's the best thing out this year. Yeah. It's brilliant. There's maybe just a few too many imperfections that these games don't, that these other games don't have. Do you know what I mean? Should, that should, I think it should maybe go. Okay, Guilty Gear Strive at number eight. Yeah. I want to say a few words about it. Neve will get the bottle of wine again that's a good idea that's a very good idea okay we're not cutting none of this you guys are going to hear footsteps you're going to hear chairs you're going to hear that wine flowing because it's time to pour one out for guilty gear strive which was my fourth favorite game of the year and i that hence why i wrote some notes okay very cool game for gamers is my first bullet point this game is gamer capitalized oh yeah and with wit wit a capital z at the end nice okay Visuals are 100%. Music, 1000%. The roster is not overwhelming. Every fighter serves a function. I I said that earlier on. Uh, All the new characters are fun and great additions to the roster and world building, which is a difficult thing to do in fighting games. See the most recent addition to Street Fighter V. Yeah. That dude sucks. Oh, he sucks. I hope they're not actually planning on building Street Fighter VI around him. Uh, They said they were. 
Yeah, they they said that, and I'm hoping that they'll be so, like, actually, you know what? Never mind. They'll take a step back from the feedback. One standout character is Gold Lewis Dickinson, and I never like slow, heavy characters. But this game got someone like me who turns their nose up at them to give him a chance. And I love Gold Lewis. He can get his dick in, son. He can get his dick on. I, Strap it in and make me smile. Neve, I think that every time I hear Dickinson. And it was really hard to study Emily Dickinson in secondary school. <laughs> um, I'm bummed to see Guilty Gear yeah. go out, but I mean, there's a lot of passion for every other game on this list. and We're nope. in the top 10. There's passion yeah. for all of them. Yeah. Of the fighting games that came out this year, it's, it's the best one. Oh, yeah. Which, you know. A lot fucking, came out. Like, yeah. a lot came out. Hell yeah. Um, but yeah, no, um, it, and it, it is unfortunate that it's very reduced in terms of its skill and push, but that does allow an opportunity for a new player base. And let's be, let's be real, Brian, that's never going to affect babies like you and me. No. Played that Dungeons and Fighters beta. That thing feels great. Well, let's see how that goes next year. Mm-hmm. So that's Guilty Gear Strive at number eight. That hurts a little bit, but I think it's the right call. Yeah. It's too flawed to go any further. Thank you for the wine, Neve. Thank you for the wine, Neve. And Neve, your move. What's going to be number seven? Disco Elysium, the final cut. I will give you the Forgotten City. Okay, I'll take it. Okay, okay Forgotten City yeah. at number seven. Fair fucks to it. For something that was originally a Skyrim mod that just planted itself and really made a name. I think everyone should play this game. Yeah, it is super tight. This is the best time loop game of the year. Big point off it, though. Um, I wasn't able to fuck any of my blood relatives. Oh. Was huh. that just a bad ending? Yeah, you sure? Yeah. <laughs> you sure this is... Maybe this isn't <laughs> this a This is a time loop game, game yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. There Why is, is like... that a thing in these games? <laughs> yeah, oh, no! I don't know. <laughs> it's in everything. <laughs> At least it's not in Forgotten City, and that's why mm. that does so well. Also because it's very good. Um, I've not played it, but I, I think it's great. Yeah, really liked Forgotten City. Like the, the dialogue and the voice acting is amazing. It is a game where you interview people to find out who will break the, um, the golden rule and cause a calamity. And it is up to you to solve that puzzle by any means. If you want, you can go through this game without doing any combat whatsoever. Uh, there is three different endings and they... They pile on top of each other in interesting ways. It all feels very complete. And I got so into the loop mechanics that I I went for the achievement to try and get it in the least amount of runs. And I thought that was interesting, just like poking at things. I died eight times. You can do it in two. That's crazy. Yeah. Wow. Just a game I didn't expect to love. Oddly beautiful, I think. Yeah. Um, There's one part where you go into like a kind of a bath that's just like lit by torchlight and it is just Lovely. gorgeous mm-hmm. like oh it, it uh, like for a skyrim mod should not look this good and like yeah the character models are a little ropey but like they're better than like skyrim yeah <laughs> like they look nice they they have posing and they're expressive and like the voice acting is good and um i really really enjoyed this game like i played it like i i I beat it right before we started game of the year i think i played it for four hours all the way through was not bored for a single second fully engaged the entire time and i think number seven is where it goes and now we're at a very another (laughs) difficult number which is number six where it's you nearly made it to the top five Mm -hmm. but you're number six Mm -hmm. that's another cruel number and it's John, is it? Yep. How are we feeling about Resident Evil Village? Because <sighs> I do not want to let that go. I don't want to get it, let it go either. See, the problem with Resident Evil Village, it is not my favorite Resident Evil. Same. I think it has a lot of problems, especially in the storytelling department. Absolutely. Um, That make it kind of one of the weakest in that regard. But the stuff it does with the Monster Council characters, they are so instantly iconic. That League of Villains it's, it's is brilliant. It's so good. Lady D goes out of that game super early and it's so disappointing. And then somehow the rest of the cast carry it. And yeah. that is impressive. 
I look back on it nearly with more fondness than when we're playing it because there was some bits where I was like a little frustrated. There with was pacing. large parts of that game where I just was not having a very good time. Mm-hmm. I would say, out of everything else on this list, I think it has some of the highest highs and some of the lowest lows. It is the most inconsistent game, but when taken in totality, it is a fucking wild ride that knows yeah. exactly what it is. And that is valuable. Like, silliness is good. Yeah. You know? When it hits, it hits. And it also felt like it is, like... I was so excited as a Resident Evil fan. Like, so many people were playing this and streaming it. And it felt like this real, like, up moment in what was kind of a shitty year where people were really, like on this game and very like driven just by how fun it was and that was a really nice thing to be part of as well so even though it's like not my favorite resident evil and like that game runs so smoothly so smoothly this like runs as good on a ps4 as it does on a ps5 and it looks opulent it looks gorgeous it looks dense with stuff they know how to use that engine so well they do I can't wait to see what they make next. Mm -hmm. But that's the kind of problem is for me, it was like, I really appreciated it, but I wanted more and I want to see what they've learned from this game because it does have mistakes in it. Not big mistakes, but it has missteps, let's say. Yeah. Oh, for sure. And like, I I feel like the action can be fun. It's kind of janky. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I feel like there is a precision to the combat that is not there and was there in like, you know, your remakes and your fours and mm. stuff like that. And that is disappointing. Um, I'm looking at the games here and in terms of protagonists, is Ethan the weakest? When you play as Ethan, do you feel good about yourself? I don't like Ethan. I think Ethan, I think Ethan was the mis- one of the missteps for me for Village. I think this game would have been more interesting if they had made Mia the protagonist. I don't think I needed more Ethan fucking Winters in my life, to be honest. Um, But he's there, and that's who we got, and he is very much an audience surrogate. I know they tried to make him more of a character, or at least that's what people say. I didn't get that from him. I thought he was about as much, you know, as much as seven. I didn't see any more from him, really. He's just a pair of hands that gets fucked up. Yeah. I guess here's an argument for Resident Evil Village, though. In terms of us three as a podcast... This is a game that we all played and all loved. And I yeah. don't think you can say that about any other game on this list. No. And no. like, we're discussing it now, but I don't think it should go out now. It is the agreeable median upon which... Which we, we traditionally sp- do super well. Yeah. Yeah. Because none of us are gonna like sabotage that game. <sighs> okay. How are you feeling about Disco Elysium, John? <sighs> Disco Elysium, to me, is the game of the generation so far. That's nuts. I know. It is, yeah. Okay. But, like, I don't say that because I'm trying to win an argument. Say no more. Imagine my fingers on your lips. (laughs) Shh, shh, shh. I (laughs) can't. Okay. Well, I feel like... (sighs) Like, No More Heroes 3? Like, where are we we with that? I really like that That's a broken, stupid beautiful game and i hate it and i love it and it just it makes me feel so much and like in a way it does not deserve to be here in a way it does not hang with any other game in this list in another way it's more special than any of them it's like priceless pop art hanging in a piss-stained punk alley bar it's so good okay whose cut is it is it mine i think it's mine it's yes john's John's. i think Listen, you don't know. is there... Is, ha, ha, okay, like, again, not, not because I'm seriously thinking of cutting it, but just talk to me about Halo Infinite. <sighs> this is so The hard. Halo Infinite combat has just been updated so masterfully with the grapple and the sprint. It feels like these have always been part of the Halo tool set. I used that Halo grapple hook, and I just thought, like, ooh. <laughs> it, like is... it feels that good. It is great. And like you can dance around the map, pulling yourself to enemies. I love the grapple sticky grenade combo, but you can do a grapple shotgun. You can do grapple energy sword, grapple hammer. You can shoot yourself up the mountainous terrain because all the terrain in Zeta Halo is like the forerunner hexagonal, like giant cube things and like rock. And you were just shooting yourself up with the grapple. The movement in it is just so good and the combat is just so Halo, like it's just, like it's perfect, it feels so great. 
where Halo, not that it doesn't work for me, where I'm kind of having reservations is this is the first time it's moved into an open world. Like this is three studios. And this is the kind of biggest change they've made since kind of inheriting the Halo, the Halo license from Bungie. And like, part of it works, like it works, cause it's like, it's the Halo combat in an open world space, but then it kind of has the same open world problems that maybe Breath of the Wild has, where you're not gonna find anything specifically interesting on the map. You are following waypoints and when you get there, you do what's there. You know, there isn't a like, I will find something interesting at the top of this mountain. You know what you're going to find maybe like after playing this for five hours, you kind of get the structure, but then it is still Halo combat on top of it. And the open world allows like emergent gameplay to happen where you can just call like crazy tanks and stuff to your fobs the more you unlock and you can just kind of have chaotic fun. But kind of in a similar way to Guilty Gear Strive, I feel like this is real fertile ground for them to grow stuff out of. Because with this open world, it is kind of like one environment. Like there isn't any variety in environmental design. And it's just that one biome. And it kind of, that as an open world premise is very old school and pretty weak. Like you're used to kind of having very different environments you can go to in an open world. And I feel like that's something they will add to as this game goes on. And this game also doesn't feel like a full package without the co-op and the forge mode. So kind of like Strive, I feel like it is giving me everything I want, but there's parts of it that are missing. Have you played much of it, John? I have. Um, it, I definitely like, would be coming at it from a very different angle with you, where like, you know, you have such a complete view of what Halo is and when it's at its best. For me, um, I really struggled with the first couple of hours and I was like, oh no, I don't like this at all. And I felt bad because I know how important it is to you. And so I kind of persevered with it. And I did get to a point where I really started enjoying just those open world skirmishes, like rolling up on a base and being like, okay, how do I attack? And being like, okay, they have this, this, and this. Um, I was really frustrated by how quickly you run out of ammo for the weapons at first. And then I started to realize that makes these fights weird and scrambly yeah. and you always have to be thinking about what's next and using your ammo wisely so really that just adds to my feeling of the combat as like these weird combat puzzles and i love that i think that's great i don't know that this is a game that's ever going to get me on like an emotional level or just on a real intense level i think this is Halo doesn't like I I don't I've never felt emotional about Halo. I really like Halo combat. You know, I'm not so invested in the lore that I'm going to feel like intense about Master Chief. But even earlier, I, earlier you we those were books. You gotta read them. Earlier we were talking about how you'd put the card in the back yeah. of your head and that got emotion out of you. So like, it's not direct <sighs> narrative emotion, but it's got yeah, you. You know, but that's such a like like Halo moment. And this is like this is a problem that, with that with Halo. Though, yeah. Man. But there's also an issue with that, like as a long-term fan with Halo Infinite, it has the kind of the difficult job of bridging the gap narratively with Halo 5, which was a really, really messy, messy ending. And also inviting new people into this world. And the only thing they can really bank on there, because you're not gonna get anything satisfying for those two groups that are so disparate. The one thing they can focus on is Master Chief's relationship with the AI. That is something that old fans and new people can instantly understand. He's kind of a closed off military dude and here's a chirpy little AI in his ear that kind of brings his humanity out. And that is something more universal. So that works as an intrigue for Infinite, but as a long-term fan, I kind of feel like everything I've spent my time learning about Halo is kind of left a little in the dust to kind of reach this compromise between two groups. So I understand it's kind of the best they can do with kind of bridging that gap and kind of starting this as a soft reboot. But also like, it does kind of mean a lot of what I know kind of isn't important. And a lot of this lore comes from Halo Wars 2, which I haven't played. That's so weird, so I've heard about that. Yeah, yeah, so like there's weird stuff like this where even as a Halo fan, it's not going to be very narratively fulfilling to me. And it feels like it's trying to recapture a lot of those Cortana moments with the new AI, the weapon, who she's just called the weapon in this. So like, yeah, but also no. You sound more conflicted on it, I feel like, than you did when it was just multiplayer. Yeah, 
The multiplayer is solid multiplayer, and like that is very easy to argue for, but I'm not going to try and push multiplayer to a number one spot in Game of the Year. You know, I just... Well, like, I think it's, it is all the one. Party. Yeah. Like, it's all Halo Infinite. But when you just have to focus on gameplay, Halo Infinite is perfect. Like, it's like that thing you were talking about with the frustration with the ammo. I felt that first, too. And then I was like, it was making me having to think about the guns I was using and think about how I used my mobility to It was move frustrating the when the enemies weren't offering enough to be an actual challenge. It became an actual really interesting part of the combat when the enemies started being a threat. Yeah. So yeah. I'm not ready for Halo Infinite to go now, but I am not so enamored with it that I won't let it go soon. Okay. I'll let, <laughs> look, look, I'll let Bravely Default 2 go. Bravely Default 2, the number six game of Let's Fight a Boss. I'm going horse. Game of the year, 2021. Okay, number six. How long do you think we've been recording for? Oh, I have no idea, Brian. Do you guys want to know the raw length of yeah. this? Yeah, what we got. Without editing from... Oh, and by the way, thank you, Oni, so much. Oni, you're the best. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for a great job on this edit. You have at least three hours and 33 minutes... <laughs> You guys thought I was crazy when I said four hours. <laughs> no, it, it we the raw of this is going to be four hours long. I don't know what the final total length is, but it's going to be four hours. You were right. This is this is ridiculous. Okay, we have five games left. Do you want to do games one or, or, or okay? Okay, so games ten through six are at number ten, the Grace Ace Attorney Chronicles. At number nine, Boomerang X. At number eight, Guilty Gear Strive. At number seven, The Forgotten City. At number six, Bravely Default 2. Are there any shockers in there for you two? I thought Guilty Gear Strive would get into our uh, top five. I thought that was top three. But when it actually, when push came to shove, I just, there were too many reasons for it not to go higher. Yeah. Um, and then alphabetically, we have five games left. We have Disco Elysium, The Final Cut, Halo Infinite, Metroid Dread, No More Heroes 3, and Resident Evil Village. Brian, it is your cut. You want to talk about No More Heroes 3? I mean, we can talk about it. We're in the top five, John. I know. Yeah. I love this game. See, so do I. This is a stupid, impossible game that shouldn't exist, and somehow it's great. This should have been Shenmue 3. This should have been <laughs> oh Shenmue God. 3. And it's not. It's the opposite. It's 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 the most No More Heroes game that's ever existed. I played through No More Heroes 1 earlier this year. No More Heroes 3 is a better game. Oh yeah, it is. Absolutely. Like, without question. If you don't think that, you'll go back and play No More Heroes. Like, I love it still. It's aged. This brings that impossible, stupid fucking game into the modern era in the most beautiful, stylish way possible. It is... Everything about this game just oozes personality and charm and it missteps and there's parts of it that are broken and stupid and frustrating and there's literal geometry in it that doesn't make sense. Like the you if you drive your motorcycle up to it, it will just freak out. Like yep. it's broken, but it's imperfect. And I, I love that about it because it does just feel like this group of Japanese guys who are hyper passionate about this bunch of stupid things and they made this ugly beautiful game out of it and i loved it so much and it left an emptiness inside me when i was done yeah you make some good points i do like that game <laughs> <laughs> there was a cut there yeah. <laughs> um what else you got brian disco elysium of course i think we should put disco elysium at number five disco elysium is at number five obviously it can't go any further than that neither of you have played it mm -hmm. you don't have any real like feelings towards it i feel like i've talked about this game a lot but i'll, I'll just reiterate this is my favorite game of the generation so far I, it's it does story and writing so differently than anything else and so much better like there is a i fucking hate saying this and i know what a bell and i sound like saying this there is a novelistic quality to disco elysium it feels like a book in a lot of weird ways but in a way that's also a video game that is uses like your different stats like you know i've talked before about how 
you have these 20 stats that are these 20 different personality traits and all of them are like a part RPG party member in your head. All of them lead to different scenarios. All of them have like dramatically different outcomes on how the story can go. People can die. People can like, you know, survive depending on all your stuff. There's so little violence in this game. There's practically none. And when it happens, it is so shocking and brutal. Like there's one scene in particular and everyone who knows this, knows has played this game knows what I'm talking about. And it left me like cold. Like, it left me like I had just seen something fucked up happen out on, like, the streets. It was that impactful. And I would really... I don't think, like, you know, not everyone's going to like this game. It's easy to say that. But no, there are going to be people who just bounce off this game. And that's fair because I nearly did three times. But I just kept coming back to it because I felt like there was something great here. And I think there really was. And I'm really glad it got this far and i know i fought for it and i know i know i was a little prick over it but i really believe in this game and when i realized what it was i was bummed that we hadn't included it in like previous game of the years but i also think the remaster is important like you know it's got voice acting i am very dyslexic large blocks of text i can't do i just cannot do them that the voice acting like all the extra bits they voice acted that basically means that someone like me can enjoy this game and i don't think that's a small deal i think that's a really really big deal and i love this game and i'm super glad it made it this far but this is the right time for it to go like i feel good about this a real boy game (laughs) Uh, it it is very masculine i have never (laughs) felt a want to commit violence on you But Jesus Christ, you motherfucker. Uh, real Fucking game. Halo McGee over here. <laughs> Do you know who'd like this game? Joe Rogan. He'd, he'd, he'd love it. No, he wouldn't. <laughs> no, he wouldn't. Johnny totally. Real he would not. He would not. Lads it's lads not a game. lads game. So many girls I know like this game. So many people fit, fucking ship Kim and the detective. Fuck you both. Fuck you both. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Rogan would just be like, I can't, I can't play Call of Duty, man. Ugh. Nah, I think he'd be like, whoa, I'm woke now. No, he... Well, that'd be a result, right? <laughs> yeah, I got myself a wake and bake. <laughs> I feel like you're just trying to burn out my voice so I can't keep arguing. It's a good technique. Mm-hmm. Disco Elysium is number five. But what's our number four? Whose go is it? Brian. Is it my go? Yeah. I believe so, right? Boy, golly gosh, I sure do love a game called No More Heroes Tree. Golly gosh, indeed. Oh, me too. So what do you want to cut? I'm begging you, Neve. Please, can No More Heroes Tree be our number one game? I beg of you. No. Damn, I thought that would work. No. I... Let's not... talk Metroid Dread. I don't want to talk about Metroid Dread. Well, like, we have to talk about it. As you said, Brian, it's only four games left, so got to talk about them all. Let's talk about Dread. I think we should cut No More Heroes 3. Number four for No More Heroes 3. No, Neo, don't cut No More Heroes 3. Little... <laughs> Neo, don't cut No More Heroes 3. Please don't. No. I think... No. Neo, don't cut No More Heroes John 3. John has no dog in the top no. three if that happens. Brian says don't cut No More Heroes 3. Oh, for fuck's sake, devil deal. No, mo- no, No More Heroes 3. We're not cutting it now. I can say nothing further. <laughs> I, I have to respect the devil deal. If you don't know what the devil deal is, maybe listen to the pre-show, buddy. Uh, no, I'm just going to say, if you don't know what the devil deal is, that's your fault. Yeah. That's your fucking fault. And how dare you? How dare you? I made a negotiation. I'm sticking to it. So we're cutting No More Heroes Tree. Got mm-hmm. it. So what are we cutting then? Metroid Dread? Seems to me if you have kind of Two games you feel very strongly about in the final how, here. How, where the, how, how? Halo Infinite Resident Evil Village. Yeah, it seems like you've two games as well. I have one. No More Heroes 3. We all have Village. Village is all our baby. I, I'll, I'll let, I'll, I will cut Village right now. Fuck off. I cut Village too. <laughs> I can't. I agree with Nave, Village. You have, you have played, like, I, I respect it, but you have played it this way the whole time, where you're acting like you have the same dogs in the fight we do, but you do not. I, I agree. And Brian loves your chaos and lets you away with it, yeah. but it's fucked up, and I will not stand for this. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm playing this game very respectfully. <laughs> I have cut Bravely Default 2 at number 6. <laughs> A very good JRPG that Neve likes. I feel like this would be a lot 
more convincing without the sniggering. I can't help it. <laughs> um, oh, like, have Brian pick something? I think we should cut Halo Infinite. Okay. Are you okay with Halo Infinite being number four? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Halo Infinite is number four in our top five game of the year 2021. Hell yeah. Halo's back. It plays like Halo, which is amazing, except now you have a grapple hook, which makes it even better. And you know, from them going from that first trailer where everyone lost their shit to something that people kind of universally love, Mm -hmm. it's really fucking cool to see. Like, I found it heartwarming just watching Halo from the outside and seeing how many Halo fans were, like, pumped about this game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm happy to see it go out for. I haven't got to finish the campaign, so... I think that's a pretty high spot for something I can't even push in that level. Whose turn is the next? Neve, your turn. Neve, no yeah. more Heroes Three. Why no more Heroes Three over Metroid Dread? Um, because I feel like Metroid Dread, kind of in the same vein of Halo, is like something coming back and doing it right and appeasing fans in that way. No more uh, Heroes Three is the third No More Heroes game. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. sorry, I'm sorry, yeah. but that was yeah. funny, come on. <laughs> that was good. Yeah, I get it, I get it, it is. Um, No More Heroes 3, like, I think it's, like, so in love with other stuff sometimes. And I found the writing around the female characters, the bit I experienced, like, kind That's of fair. blah. Like, you know, um, I do like it. its design sensibilities visually. I really like the monsters. I think there's a real camp aesthetic running through it that I really appreciate that like that I would like to see in more games. And it's what I go to Japanese games for is to see this kind of like crazier hyped up aesthetic. And it really delivers on that. But also like driving that bike around the shitty open world terrible. is pretty terrible, terrible yep. you know. If I had an opinion, I would chime in here. You can chime in. I can't until we rank it. What do you... What? Because that's part of the devil deal. No, the devil deal was don't cut it at number four. That was our devil deal. You, okay. You're, you're free to go. Okay. Oh, yeah. I really like No More Heroes 3. It's a good game. Yeah, it's a good game. But, like, Metroid Dread, in the same vein as Halo, I feel like, had to appease, like, Metroid fans. And it did. It certainly did. This is a fucking Metroid game. And the Metroid franchise, if you split that down the middle, 50% of those games are awful. And the other 50% are amazing. And I'm so relieved that Metroid Dread is in the good half. Well, what about Resident Evil Village? Because I feel like we all had some pretty negative things to say about that early on. And like, it is great. I think it's cool. To me, I don't know that that's game of the year. Because like, that's the conversation we're having now. Devil deal. We're not cutting village now. We have to cut something else. I cannot object. That's the devil deal. John, you can if you want, but I, I can't say shit. Do we want something that succeeds modestly? Because that's what Dread does. That's so mean. <laughs> I like Dread. I love Dread. I think Dread was great. I think it has great moments. I also had, like... 30, 40, 50 minute sections in Dread where I got lost and was so fucking frustrated. And I don't know how I was meant to know where to go from some of those sections. I eventually understood the way the game was trying to teach me, but I had really aggravating moments with Dread. Like up to about five hours in, I was kind of like on the edge with it. I was like, kind of thought I might drop it. I don't see you playing Dread Neve and getting anything out of it. Oh God, no, I know. That I wouldn't like this game. Even though it ticks all the boxes, it's just not there. It's uh, it's just not a genre I enjoy. Yeah. Like, I don't like Metroidvanias at, at all. Like, once I saw this, I was just like, oh, no. But So you'd still prefer that to Village or No More Heroes? No, well, like, for me, I just don't want Village to go out in the number three spot. I would like to get Village to two or one, so I don't really care which one of these go now i feel like it's easier for me to attempt to cut uh no more heroes because it doesn't have the prestige as something like metroid i don't think that prestige is like as strong as i think it is no i don't think that's a plus 
Okay. I think that's like to me, I understand what you mean. I don't think a series history should necessarily be like a dominating factor in this decision. Not even a dominating factor. I think it should be factor. how much we love these games. Yeah, I get that. I guess like if I was to pick out of these two, I would be more interested in No More Heroes over Dread any day of the week just because of it, its aesthetic. And that's like the same reason why I want to push for Village, even though it wasn't perfect narratively for me. And like Resident Evil has always been a narrative mess. But aesthetically and what it's doing with characters mm. and what it is bringing in, in that space. I guess like say what you will about yeah. Village. Like I went into Village not really giving a shit about modern Resident Evil. I am now back in. Like I want to know where this series goes. But I don't know how we solve this. I can't remember what I, the devil deal was there. Did I? Know? I don't know. My devil deal was I don't want Village to go out now. Okay. Like I want you, one of those other games to go out now, but Village doesn't need to be number one for me. But I, I, I don't need to fight Dread versus No More Heroes. That is your fight. Because I know the way it goes is that I prefer Dread to No More Heroes Three, mm-hmm. and John preferred No More Heroes Three to Dread. Would that be a correct thing to say? That would be correct. I think you enjoyed No More Heroes more than I enjoyed Dread. I did really enjoy No More Heroes. And too. I really enjoyed Dread, but we had some conversations about No More Heroes, Brian, and we made some noise. We did hoot and haw. Now, Metroid Dread is my favorite game from 2021. <laughs> my second favorite game is No More Heroes 3. Resident Evil Village did not place in my top games. But if we're going to do this, I can just go... Now, Resident Evil Village was my number one game of the year. Okay. And Bravely Default 2 was my number two game of the year, and which we cut... At number six. At number six. No More Heroes 1 and 3 <laughs> was my favorite game this year. That's your number one. Village would not have placed in my top five. Fuck. I think I might be lying. I'm not sure I believe that. Damn it, I wish I did. I wish it was that easy, but I, I think Village would rank in my top five. I just want that to be true. Me too, but the thing is, I don't believe it. But if you believe it, you believe it. But for me, I couldn't believe no, it. Village is good. Village is really it's good. It's a great game, yeah. It just brings so much. Like, okay, you don't like Lady Demetress section. Then you have House Benvolio, and that's like... So fucking good. Like, I, I, that was, I loved that section. I get why people don't like it. I get why people don't like the doll boss fight. But you fucking stab the doll with scissors and tentacles shoot out of it. I, will, I wanted more doll stuff. I was frustrated in that section because I felt like narratively it kind of went off the rails because it was just like, oh, Ethan has like worries about being a father. And it's just like, he does me whole. I, I think I think for it's me, never been mentioned like, before. the yeah. game was already off the rails at that point and I was just on board. Mm-hmm. I was like, cool, Lady D's a dragon now. Cool, I'll fight this giant fish. Yeah. Cool, now a doll's attacking me. And like I was... And then you fight just, Frankenstein in his factory. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it just felt like a weird... And you're in Trocosaurus. ...ride at that point. And I was... I, was, I liked it, you know? I, I really... There's kind of nothing else like it. And this is like a triple A game. This is so fucking weird. Mm. <laughs> Which is okay, which is weirder? Resident Evil Village or No More Heroes 3? I honestly think Village. Oh, I would have to say No More Heroes 3. No More Heroes Weird is is weird, but like it is niche and it is for people who know what that is. Village is like Resident Evil mainline game and it is bananas. <laughs> it's true. That is true. That's a good point. <laughs> like he gets but his I, hand I feel, cut I, I, off <laughs> by a lady, but like I, I I feel like you could argue that same point the opposite way as well. Yeah. This is such a weird stalemate. Yeah. I think this is the most difficult top three we've ever done. I am comfortable with Village going out at number two. I don't need to push that to number one. Then you know what? I'm going to put Metroid Dread at number three. (gasps) Are you serious? I don't know, am I? So no more Heroes 3 would be our let's like let's fight a boss game of the year. God, that'd be weird, wouldn't it? I'm just saying, we've never had a John game as game of the year. We've had John Bryan games, we've had John Neve games, we've had Neve games, we've had Bryan games. I bought No More Heroes 3 on a whim. I wasn't gonna play it this year. I just had a free weekend and I went to Argos and bought it. Brian. He climbs out of the coffin and Takeshi Miike gives him a katana. He does. 
Brian, they ended that game like it was the start of a cinematic universe, despite knowing they'll never be able to make another one. That was very good. If you guys want to do it, I'm, I'm okay with it. I'm okay with little letting that happen. You're okay with the little piss baby game getting to number one? Yeah, like, I feel like it's like, you know, it isn't lad game like some of the other ones on the list. A so, lad game? Yeah, like disco. Like Neve, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> I what think... are you for someone who pushed for Halo and Resident Evil? <laughs> I like how weird No More Heroes is. I appreciate that about it. I appreciate how fucking weird it is. I would have no problem with being it being our number one if Village you know gets what? the number two spot. I'm fine with Metroid Dread being number three if Resident Evil Village is number one because it is an agreeable median. I don't agree with that. You don't? Mm-hmm. Okay. Where would you rank the games? The three games we have. Personally, I like Dread, Village, and No More Heroes. I'm kind of in agreement. Dread, Village, No More Heroes. Look, Dread and Village are both going to win a ton of Game of the Year awards. No More Heroes 3, this is that little piss baby's only shot. The Let's Fight a Boss Game of the Year 2021. He is right. I am going to put Metroid Dread at number three, and I'm going to talk about Metroid Dread, and we'll get back to this. Metroid Dread, Brian's favorite game of 2021, (laughs) is at number three. This game was my biggest surprise of the year. If a future version of me went back in time to 2017, Brian, and said, Metroid Dread's real and it's in development and it's going to come out in 2021 I'd be like this is a trick I am in a system, you are lying to me there's no way this game is real I fucking shat myself my legs were stuck together with brown (laughs) think I'm joking? No, you think I would make a joke about that? no I do not joke about Metroid this game looks so good so many subtle animations from Samus. She is so cool. Samus herself, she controls really well. She's super nimble and flexible, tight and responsive. When you get to grips with everything that she can do, it's so satisfying to hunt and explore. The weapons and abilities you gain along the way open the world up in a very well-flowed manner. Step by step, It's never too overwhelming. Something interesting happens in this game every 20 minutes. The game is constantly throwing new ideas at you or remixing older ideas in different combinations with inventive solutions. Music and atmosphere is super immersive. So many tiny audio details, sound textures from different creatures, whether organic or mechanical, big or small. I love when Samus farts a little and you can hear it. It's so good. Oh, yeah. I like it when she goes like, and she goes, hee hee. (laughs) I'd laugh. Boss battles are amazing. Great variety of fighting big, dumb, screen-filling beasts. And then these smaller, more intimate fights. Perhaps a dance against warriors the same scale as Samus. The latter being handled as something new, but rather well. Some of my favorite fights were the ones I wasn't expecting. (laughs) Overworlds are unfortunately a bit samey. I wish it had more variety in how each section stands out, different color palettes or signature music. When I think about Metroid Prime or Metroid Fusion, they have really standout areas. And when you think about recent genre games like the Ori series, they do this better. There was one moment where I was stumped and genuinely got lost. Had to look it up online, and a couple of others had the same issue as me. This happened because I got sidetracked by an optional ammo upgrade and forgot where I was meant to be going. Other than that, the game does an amazing job of guiding you without it being too obvious. In terms of guiding, it does a fun trick a few times of looping you back to where you started on the map, only now you have been rewarded with the upgrade and you can zip past previous awkward obstacles and enemies. I love when video games do this. This... Shortcut, fucking brilliant. You get this in games like Bloodborne as well. Like just like it, it could be a mechanic, or it can just be like a short, like a physical shortcut in the map. But 
It just saves you time, but but it's a reward for the time you put in beforehand. Ah, a Galerius. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it is. it's cool that Metroid borrowed from Forgotten yeah, City like that. Absolutely. Unfortunately, despite being open world, it's very linear in sub very linear in some sections. A lot of the teleportation machines and shafts you travel through are one way only, but you don't know this until you are in the middle of it. It means to go back you have to traverse the long way around, and it's very frustrating when you're trying to one hundred percent the game. Getting all the collectibles. Other than that? I loved it. And I'm dead inside. I will die now. I have nothing further to say. Well, actually, I have one or two more things to say. About <laughs> No More Heroes 3 and Resident Evil Village. I'll leave it to you. Okay. That's our number three game of the year. Congratulations to Metroid Dread. A game one year ago we did not know existed. That's insane. Wow. Yeah. So, two games left. Are we settled on the order? Or is there some fight left? No, I'm not going to fight it. Okay. I know that's the boring thing to do. But well, I, th I guess we've had it, we've had at it at this yeah. point. Like, I, I kind of don't have a whole lot left to say. Village I has its problems, but... Village has its problems. It's also a beautiful, chaotic mess that is just so filled with crazy fucking shit. It's so rare these days to see a AAA game of this level go this off the rails in such a delightful way. Like, Lady D choke slamming you through the floor is amazing. What, oh, trying to open a gate and watching your hand slide off is amazing and putting together what just happened. That is all fantastic. Uh, it's stupid in so many ways. The game opens with your wife being murdered by Chris Redfield. <laughs> what the fuck was that? I don't know. Um, you you fight a weird bird nun with an Irish accent, and it's all so just insane and enjoyable. And I did the full gradient with this game. I started off not liking it, and I went all the way to just having a blast with it. Neve, what are you gonna say? similar feelings I like village I was very up on down uh, up and down on while I was playing it I'm not a huge fan of Ethan I'm not a huge fan where they kind of took his narrative but I'm glad by the end of it they said goodbye to him and let's hope they keep it that way yeah that'd be good but what they brought in terms of enemy design is just so wacky so out there and so instantly iconic that this game I think will age brilliantly in the same way that Resident Evil 7 is just such a delight to go back to I think so will Village because there's just kind of nothing else like it the Duke is like your friend in this most hostile place in the world and every time he shows up you're just like ah oh. yeah even though he's like terrifying in his own right yeah. there's yeah. a warmth to that dude I love mm -hmm. he's alright and like I appreciated the friend of mine used to say mm -hmm. what are you what buying are you, you know shit like that um, just like even like like we've been talking about Lady D a lot but like Heisenberg's like wild accent and just his weird aesthetic and his factory of ghouls was a fun uh, was a high point for me some people didn't like that i loved it i mm -hmm. shit the bed when you had to fight those full metal guys like just the they other ones great. covered in metal mm -hmm. you're right yeah they were really fun like moreau being like this giant little like this little sad fish man who turns into a giant big fish man and kind of brings you back into more Resident Evil 4 vibes mm -hmm. it touched on so many genres and it tried so much and it did did it all without any bugs and without the game crashing and it was gorgeous like start to finish yeah that's our new number two game of the year and number one something that i have to say i'm kind of in total shock over i am too yep didn't <laughs> did not see this coming no more heroes 3 um, I've been a fan of No More Heroes for a long time. I don't think those games are perfect by any means. I think especially the most recent playthrough that the No More Heroes one shows me like, you know how tight and limited those games are. Yeah. Um, I think No More Heroes 3 should have, everything about it, it should have been a disaster. Like it just shouldn't have been a good game. Yeah. Like I think for me what I love about it is the collaboration on it. Like there's so many different, like the soundtrack is from so many different artists. Yeah. The visuals are from so many different animation studios. Uh, ACBU, who do Pop Team Epic, do the intro to Velvet Chair Girl. 
Um, I feel if, if you if you went through this game and tracked every different kind of visual style in it, there would probably be like ten. Yeah. Like it 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 just switches. Like even right up until the final cutscene, they completely switched the medium in the final cutscene. Makes no fucking sense. I don't know why they did it, but they did it. You yeah. know. Yeah. The studio Kamikaze Doga, who did the JoJo's Bizarre Adventure openings, they did bits on this game. Yep. Uh, Inio Asano, who is one of my favorite mangaka, did the designs on Midori, Midori Kawa as one of the bosses. And she's brilliant. She is. And I really appreciate, because when you play a game where you're going to fight a bunch of bosses and you're kind of drip fed them, I thought it was super cool that almost all of them are introduced to you up front and they're like Sofubi toys encased in plastic. Mm hmm. And you're like, I want to fight that one. I yeah. want to fight that one. And then there's a bunch of fake outs. They so start subverting it so hard towards the end. Yeah. And it's amazing. Some people did not enjoy this game. And I, I can't necessarily blame them. But to me, like, there's so much creativity in every single part of this game. Everything you do to me feels special. I think the Blade Katana feels incredible. I think like kill, like landing that final hit and watching the screen turn black and just kill popping up, that feels great. Yeah. And it does feel like as much as it feels like this beginning of this No More Hero cinematic universe, it's not that. It's an end. Like, yeah, this it is, is it for No More Heroes and it's beautiful and sad and I love that it just went out in the most No More Heroes game way possible. And like I keep saying, it should have been a Shenmue 3. Instead, it was Travis Touchdown wearing a black hoodie that says, Fuck Racism. <laughs> yeah. And I just think that's really special. He suplexes gators in it. You suplexes gators, and it's so good. And so, congratulations to No More Heroes 3. The number one 2021 Let's Fight a Boss Game of the Year. Do you want to just read back the top five? Because we've done them all in increments, but let's just do the top five. Okay. okay. All right, I'll start off. Disco Elysium, the final cush at number five. Halo Infinite at number four. Metroid Dread, number three. Resident Evil Village at number two. And No More Heroes 3 at number one. Moe. Now that's some hot toast. Whoa! That's a good callback. Yeah. That's pretty good. We've got to do the sound effect. So guys, that's it for Game of the Year 2021. How are you guys feeling? Uh, we've been recording now for uh, four hours and five minutes. Oh, it's a good thing we don't have one more conversation that we have to have. No. One more no. battle left to fight. Oh. It's the Let's Fight a Boss Championship, the galactic battle of hopes and dreams. And all I can say is I have a lot to say about No More Heroes 3 and why it deserves to be the ultimate Let's Fight a Boss champion and dethrone the old one. What was it? One of the Fire Emblem or Donkey Kong games? I don't remember. It was Fire Emblem 3. <laughs> oh fuck yeah that game's great yeah yeah it's pretty all right um <laughs> so i guess let's let's open up this out what are you guys thinking Where, which way are you guys no, lean in no fire emblem went i think fire emblem three houses is yeah. still going to be uh number one okay that's overall. a good point but why don't we go over every okay so fire emblem turn-based rpg what was the first one of them because <laughs> are we but like are we talking c or like are we talking kind of like an old school like one of the play old us out only x no yeah no <laughs> just <laughs> play us out old XCOM games, i want to or... thank all our patrons is, is, this is year for 2021 we had a lot of growth with like our like patreon and i just want to thank everyone who's really, like joined think, the let's fight a boss it, team like, i want to give a shout out to Fire oni Emblem we've got our is... new editor for this entire year i just year. think we should give metroid dread one more go <laughs> <laughs> okay look Thanks to everyone who's been listening to us this entire year. Sometimes we have conversations where, like, we don't know when Let's Fight a Boss ends. We have no fucking idea. I would like for it to continue on for a long time. It might not. It absolutely might. But I had a blast recording it this year. And I think, like, one of the shittest parts about 2020 was not having, not doing this podcast. Mm -hmm. And I missed it so much. And this podcast, for me personally, has been, like, you know, such a comfort for what was at times a very scary and shit year and as much as brian and neve legitimately fairly don't like me right now they are still two of my best friends on the planet and i am so grateful that we got to build this stupid weird podcast 
I'm pretty happy. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm cool with No More Heroes 3 being yeah? number one okay. for 2021 exclusively. Because I feel like I got away with a crime, like nearly by accident, but not really by accident. No, I, I really like No More Heroes 3. Okay. I respect what it's doing. That's really good to hear. Yeah, but, it's like a big sticker album and you can pick your favorites and that game is whatever it wants to be. I do love stickers. Mm. But I want to thank even Brian, obviously. Um, I want to thank Tw- Twinkle Parks, Hazel for just, you know, the typical outro. I want to thank Johan for the music that's going to fade in very soon, if not right now. And also just thanks to Oni, the shadow fourth member of the boss cast, who has just been such an incredible support for us this year. Absolutely. And I don't think we could have done it without him. No, absolutely. No, I don't think so. Yeah, I don't yeah. think the podcast podcast might not be ex- in existence without Oni. Totally. Yeah. And yeah. That guy is the best. And thanks for everyone for joining us. <laughs> I cannot wait to see what we do in 2022, but it's been a blast. Yeah. Good, yeah. Good, good. Have a safe and happy holidays, everyone. Yeah. Chill out and have a nice time. I hope you get a cool present. I love you. Goodbye. We all love you. Especially you. Okay, bye. Bye. Bye.